welcome to the Bonsai Time Podcast, the monthly everything bonsai and more podcast. In today's episode, we will hear the recorded interview that I, your host Kevin, had with my good friend, the one and only Chase Rosade of Rosade Bonsai Studios, located in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Chase Rosade can be classified as one of the original American bonsai professionals, and I dare to say a pioneer in what we now know as American bonsai. He has been practicing the art of bonsai since 1953. He was and is very good friends with the likes of John Naka, Bill Valavanis, and Dan Robinson, just to name a few. Chase and I had quite a long conversation about his bonsai journey and his philosophies of life and how bonsai has led his life and so much more. Chase classifies himself as a lifetime student of bonsai, always ready to learn new techniques and new approaches. Please enjoy his story and bonsai on! I told you about being at uh, Sudo's, or not Sudo's, that, that uh, yeah, Yoshida's place, mm. sleeping under the Katatsu's. Right. right. In, uh, in Tokyo, in Kocho, in Utsunomiya, north of Tokyo, mm. at Sudo's nursery, he had built a house for his mother. Mother had died. Mm. Matter of fact, Bobby was staying there also. That's where he spent his time. And that's where I stayed when I went. There was no heat. And what they did is they had a, in the downstairs, but the house was like Kobayashi's house, built for with uh, you know tokenomas and so forth. And so oh, on. for a presentation. What a house! And then they had a little Japanese wing on it, okay. where they lived. And. Uh, it's just cold. So anyway, their char their uh, they had hibachi with charcoal in it, and then you got this little brick, mm. and you put charcoal in, and then you put it in, and you took it to bed with it, try to keep warm. Oh, <laughs> fun, really. And the other thing that I remember about Sudo was that the bath ufuro, mm. uh, the, the master of the household gets the first bath. Interesting, because I wonder if it's different depending because Gumi. My wife just told me um, dad usually goes last because dad is always the smelliest. So mom and kids go first, or sometimes dad and kids. But no. No, in good. this case, yeah. Sudo, the lord and master, went first. If he had a date or went out somewhere and came in at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, nobody could take a bath. Until he came. Until he took his bath. Wow, that's a And then, you, know, you, you know how you are, you scrub down and so forth. But yeah. by the time I get in, the time the fucking sun would be coming up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, especially after, you know, a full day of repot. Uh, you know, okay. um, I've never asked you, where where were you, where were you born? Where were you born? Were you born in Pennsylvania? Or New York? Or in the hospital. Oh, right. I mean, it's smart ass. <laughs> I mean, what what state? What state? I was born in Pennsylvania. I was born in Philadelphia. Okay. My father was from uh, Camden, Philadelphia area. Okay. My mother was from a coal cracker from the coal regions. Her father, and she went to school in Philadelphia and met my father, and then they moved to a little place called Allentown, Hmm. Pennsylvania. And uh, so I was. Born in Philadelphia, but brought up but brought up in a little town called Allentown. Allentown. I have one sister. Hmm. With um, with your time in Pennsylvania, so you you know you did did you do grade school where you were living when you were born, or did you guys move around a lot? No, no, we didn't move it. Well, we moved around a lot in the town because my father never wanted to buy a house. Oh. He would rent a house. Then they would sell it, and then they had to move somewhere else and rent a house, and then sell it and somewhere else and move a house. So I was probably in about seventh or eighth grade when they uh, they finally bought a house. That's a good amount of time, you know, bouncing yeah, around houses. Yeah, right, right, right. So within that, do you remember, you know, when your fascination for plants or trees took hold? Like what age or what what instant memory comes to mind? Ask me in a little while. I'll show you a picture of me at about three years old raking the lawn. Oh, nice! <laughs> <laughs> For all the beech trees. But uh, no, I I, all, I I you know I just remember my father was a good gardener. Hmm. Uh, my like, mother was not a gardener. Hmm. Uh, I had some uncles that had gar- were gardeners, um, but I always remembered working in the garden. 
I loved it. And I used to collect seeds from the azaleas and from some other things and grow seedlings mm. in the garden. Do you still have any of those? Uh, yes and no. I have a maple tree out there that was started in 1958. Did I show that to you? No. I, well, I think I saw it in Japanese August. Japanese maple. I, I saw it in August because I took a picture of it. Okay. okay. That was beautiful. Okay. That thing's old. Uh, yeah, that's, that's really the oldest that I think I have. That's, that's pretty good. Yes. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> my, my senior year in college, 1958. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So, okay, so, you, you know, you've been around gardening and whatnot through your, your developing years, you know, go to, going to high school. Were you, were you... Um, your hand. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Good catch. Uh, were you... Um, were you involved in any like agriculture or anything in school or oh, yeah. anything? Well, not, not in school, no. I, the school I went to did not have any kind of agricultural at all. Mm. I went to a, a school in the city, mm. uh, but uh, we can reverse back a little bit. Okay. I made the comment that I helped my father in the garden, mm. and uh, ever since I can really remember, and then in the, I used, we'd cut our lawn with a mower that did not have a mower a motor on it. it oh, rowered, old push mower. Old push mower. Yeah. And uh, that dates me. <laughs> and uh, and then I would, I, would, <laughs> I would do some neighbors. Okay. So I was probably seven, eight, nine years old doing that. The neighbors would want some shrubs trimmed and they would sort of say, where do we go from here? And uh, so I trimmed neighbors' shrubs and mm-hmm. trees and not big things, but things that I could reach. So that was my my involvement in plants. I always loved plants. Mm. And uh, finally, when I got into high school or junior high school, my father said, what, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a plant person. And he said, that's stupid, but okay, you want to be a plant person. Best of luck. <laughs> well, you better go to work at it. And he said, well, you know, okay. Well, it wasn't until I was about 16 years old, I guess I was in junior high school or high school, he said, you still want to be a plant person? And I said, yes. He said, okay. We opened a phone book and he picked out the biggest ad in there and said, we're going to go see these people. Hmm. So we went to see the people that had the biggest ad in the phone book and I walked in, said I wanted to see somebody about a job and there was a man there and he said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, I'm interested in plants, and I thought it would be nice and fun to work in a nursery. Hmm. Have you ever work in a nursery before? No. Uh, okay. When can you start? That was a Friday or Saturday. Maybe it was Saturday. I said, well, I guess I can start next week. And he said, fine. You come in Saturday and Sundays and work for us. Hmm. I did not have a car. I needed a car. So I went out and bought my first car, uh, and probably nobody will ever have heard of my first car, but uh, it was was called a Kaiser. I've never heard of it. I've never heard of it. I've never heard of it. I've heard a lot of cars. You're absolutely right. You've never heard of a Kaiser. So anyway, that was my first paying job. No, that's not quite true. But it was the first paying job in a nursery. First paying job in a nursery. Set forward the path. And... uh, so uh, I worked weekends. Hmm. Uh, once I got the car, I used to work after school in the evenings. So uh, yeah, I put in a quite a bit of time, and I did that all during high school. Did that nursery help you get into college, or did they? Did they? Did they? Or did they just like, kind of twist your ear and be like, "Hey, you should look into this more"? Or how did that? No, work? I think I think they uh, I think they had something. You know, the fact that I was there, the fact that I had. Uh, worked in a nursery, I'm sure had something to do with getting into a college, but I went to a college that was an agricultural college, a very small college at that time. What was the name of that? Uh, called, uh, now it's called Delaware Valley College. Okay. And then it was National Farm School, and National Agricultural College, and God knows what. There were six, six majors, six majors, mm. and horticulture was one of them. Mm. And so I... Uh, I have a degree in landscape design, nursery management. 
from a four-year college. And that's, that's where I got my... So, but I always worked for nurseries. Okay. I always worked for nurseries. Did you continue that work through college? And yes. Well, not through that? Yeah. The same one or different? No, same, different ones. Anything I could find it. Somebody would want to hire me. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, well, I... I did not have a car when I was in college because I couldn't afford it. Mm. Mm. So I used to hitchhike. I used to do a lot oh, of hitchhiking. Wow. You know, that stuff today is not, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's not found at all. But I hitchhiked uh, to jobs. And I only yeah. worked Saturdays and Sundays because I didn't have time. And, uh, to, to, to well, like we were discussing, horticulture classes are there's a lot there. You know? Oh, yeah, we were busy yeah. all the time. Just right. Learning everything. Right. So... In this time of nursery work, you know, growing up in the garden and whatnot, and then going to college, ultimately, for horticulture, where does bonsai fall in the place? Where did you where did you get this essence of, I want to do small trees instead of the big, long, tall ones we see in the... I was in junior high school. Okay. Uh, my father and I would always go to Philadelphia Flower and Garden Show, which has been classified as the largest garden, indoor garden show in the world. Uh, Still going to this day? Uh, yes, although with the COVID, they uh, right different uh, parameters. Had yeah. Some different parameters, but it's a a ten acre inside indoor show. That's a big building. A lot of big buildings. So that's where I saw my first bonsai, and I was completely intrigued by them. And as I said, I worked in my father's garden or played in my father's garden. I didn't mm. work or play. Uh, so I'd go out and I'd collect plants out of the garden, right. and uh, we didn't have any pots. We had wooden or wood. We had just tin cans, so we'd get some tin cans, and I'd plant these trees in these tin cans, and I'd grow them. And uh, you know, I remember they being small, so I'd just come in here with the pruning shoes and cut the shit out of it or something. So <laughs> and, go to uh, town. Go to town. What I do for the neighbors? Same yeah, thing, right? that was my first involvement in bonsai. But I was it a was it a Japanese family or was it a, a, a Caucasian family that had the trees the bonsai tree that you saw or uh, what people were having wow, at that time? No, but, uh, wow, the Philadelphia Flower Show. No, they had exhibitors, hmm. and uh, they were trees from I honestly don't know where. Okay, well, I was just like who I, I didn't know if you knew who um, was showing that like what person? Yeah, I, I honestly I honestly cannot say and remember. You remember what uh, year that was? That was a while back. I know. A long time ago. A long time Believe. ago. Probably. Probably 40s, 50s. Uh, maybe about 1950 or somewhere like okay. that. Okay. Okay, so a good amount of time. That I saw my. Yeah. Well, that, that makes sense after World War II, we're not coming back to. You know, yeah. GIs and yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, okay, so you're, so, you know, you're in college, you finish your horticulture, you've seen bonsai. Are you still continuing the? Like this fascination with this. Well, I, yes, right. My my first job after I got out of college, I really wasn't quite sure where I wanted to go in the horticultural field, but I I realized I really didn't know how to hell to grow plants very well. You've learned about it, but application. But I learned about it, but I really didn't do it do any, the application of it as you say. Yeah. And uh, so I got a job with a, uh, a nursery called Princeton Nurseries which at that time was farming about 2,000 acres of ground. Wow. And uh, oh my God. so I worked for them for a number of years. Oh. And a uh, big nursery. And I worked in all phases of the nursery. Mm-hmm. But I'd just go out and I'd see something. A truck ran over. I'd dig it out. Again, put it in a nursery pot or some such thing and play with it. So I may have had, and I, since I was, I ended up having a, an area that I was in charge of, uh, and there was a little building there and a little office there and places I could keep plants. So I maybe had 30 or 40 trees in nursery pots. You know, just all different kinds of things that had been hit by trucks and tractors and God knows what. Huh. But I didn't know what I was doing. I was just looking at them. I was just having fun. Yeah. yeah, I was having fun. Yeah. So that was, again, another involvement uh, just because it was fun. Mm. So... I know you studied in Japan. We talked about that just in the beginning, but we'll get back to that. But so take me from you know you're collecting these trees that have been run over by cars, 
you're still working at Princeton Nursery with a 2,000 plus acreage of land, right? Where do you go from there? Where, where, because you know you had your first wife, right? Did you meet her at that time? I or? met her at that time. Uh, uh, I was living in a, uh, I'll call it a boarding house or rooming house. Oh, okay, like a hostel and or something? Hostel, no, not a hostel, just a house with a, an older lady oh, owning okay. a house, and we each had a room. There were three roomers, hmm. and the other two roommates were uh, people who were at the institute, Institute of Advanced Study and doing uh, postdoctoral work at Princeton University. Oh. So I became their friend. And so I, uh, <laughs> I would go to parties at the university. I would go to dinner at, uh, in, the, uh, what do I, in the dining room. Matter of fact, I even had an academic gown because you couldn't eat dinner at Princeton at that time without wearing an academic gown. Really? Yeah, that's right. Wow. And so, uh, uh, yeah, so that's what I did. I had these friends. And then I had another group of friends. And uh, uh, I mean, I had a lot of friends, but uh, we had another another organization or another group of guys. That, uh, it was only fellas, I mean, but we did have dates and we did have girls mm -hmm. uh, called the Saturday Afternoon Bach and Bourbon Society. So we played classical music and drank a lot of bourbon. Sounds like a good time. And uh, I met my first wife at uh, one of the parties that the graduate students took me to. Okay. And uh, my first wife, Connie, was Japanese, as most people know. Mm. Great gal, great kind. Mm. And uh, so I will say uh, just somewhere along the line, we got married. And I'm still working at the nursery. Okay. And, uh, and somewhere along the line, we say we had to go to Japan. Was that influenced by her parents? Because you said they were pretty wealthy, right? They were no, they weren't there. wealthy. They her her family were extremely well educated. That's, that's, that's what. That's yeah. that's another long story. I mean, her father was one of MacArthur's interpreters, and uh, uh, but they were an educated family. Hmm. Uh, so you went to Japan. And then, um, at that time, what were you doing in Japan? Just seeing family or hanging well, out? Well, yeah, the but uh, yeah, we. Uh, uh, I'll back up just a little bit. Yeah. That uh, I uh, told my employer I wanted a leave of absence because I wanted to go to Japan for a couple of months, and he refused my leave of absence. Oh, wow. So we said, okay, fine, we'll quit our jobs and we'll go to Japan. Now, how do you go to Japan? And uh, took us eight months to get to Japan. Well, it's a, that's a whole other story of its own, but uh, we we'll, went to... We'll go back to that. We, uh, <laughs> you're not going to have time. <laughs> but, uh, but we went to Europe, and we bought a vehicle, and we drove as far east as we could drive. And it took us eight months to drive between London and Calcutta. That's, that's right. Whole, I remember that's a whole other... That was the Land Rover, right? That's the Land Rover, yeah. Everything. 1963 Land Rover, which I purchased off the assembly line. That's right. And you only went around with maps, right? Or directions from locals. Is that right? Whatever. We did have some maps. We used some RAF aerial photographs for maps also when we got to such places in Iran or Afghanistan where there were no maps at all. Okay, so you quit your jobs, go to... Uh, England, right? Go to, we went to England, and we went as far as uh, Calcutta, driving, by, you know. driving and so forth. And my wife went on to Japan. I uh, went into Southeast Asia to see some friends in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I was staying in the Buddhist temple in Thailand when Kennedy was assassinated. Oh wow! And then from there on to Japan to meet my wife and her family and right. so forth. Yeah. That was your first time to Japan. My first time to Japan. First time meeting all the extended family too. First time to meet the extended family. I'd met her brother a couple of times. So but, uh, at that time, you already knew of bonsai and things, and you were collecting these things. Well, I had yeah, I had been interested in bonsai. Yeah. My brother-in-law knew this. My Japanese brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. So he bought me a copy of uh, Yuji Oshimura's book. The the bonsai Bible they call bonsai it. Bonsai Bible, one. right? Yeah. That's right. So I got this book, and I said, "Wow!" But I didn't know where to start. And I heard of a mental, 
heard of a man by the name of Kawamoto who was called Bonsai Saike. And so I took his... Uh, you told me last night that he, he invented Saike, right? Yeah, it was his development. The uh, Japanese version of Pinji. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, so I took his 12-week class in two weeks. <laughs> Uh, and then from there went on down to visit my wife's family. Where was where was she where was she from? She was uh, from a little town called Yamato Takeda, which was be, which was near Osaka, Kyoto, Nara. Okay. That southern, area, of Japan. southern, central. Mm-hmm. That's a nice area. Good food. Um, so you were introduced by the brother-in-law, or I don't really, I don't recall. I know you've talked about it before, but it's. It's such a long history, <laughs> <laughs> to put it to put it gently. Uh, you know. yeah, I had fun. Uh, no, I went to my mother-in-law's. Uh, she spoke English. I, I and, and again, oh, right, right. again, that's a whole other story. Both my mother and father-in-law, Connie's mother and father, hmm. uh, were educated in this country. Oh, where did they go to school? Mother went to John. Her mother went to Goucher. And her father went to Johns Hopkins. And how they got there was just one incredible story. Mm. Uh, I've never heard that one, yeah. Yeah, well, I could bore the hell out of you with that, too. <laughs> and uh, But no, so we're at her house in, in this little town. A Jap, totally Japanese house with a nice, not Japanese garden, but just a nice yard. And uh, I would prune the trees in the yard and we lived a Japanese, basically life. There was it was a one hundred percent Japanese house, no Western amenities whatsoever. Yeah, there was a an indoor john, and yeah, there was running water. And, right, not a hole. And but stuff. but uh, you know, to stay warm, you had to sit by a hibachi or something. There was no That's heat saying, yeah. in the place whatsoever. And uh, so her mother knew a man who was a bonsai broker, hmm. and talked to him. And they one day they said, uh, you know. We'll take you to this bonsai nursery. I said, okay, fine. So we go to this bonsai nursery outside of Nara, Japan, which is one of the old capitals. And the uh, nurseryman's man's name was Kyozo Yoshida. Kyozo Yoshida. And we were there and uh, wandered around and spent the whole day there with Mr. Yoshida, looking around and just, it was just great. And I was like, a, I guess we can say the expression of pig and shit. It was just... It was, it was <laughs> Happy as this can be. It was neat. So, uh, let me, the end, I want to ask, was that your first time ever knowing like about a bonsai nursery specifically? Yeah. Okay. Because you, you didn't have any friends that were doing bonsai with you here. No, 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 no. Was, so there was flying. never anybody here that I ever knew that had a bonsai uh, or even thought about it or any of those such things. And as I said, uh, here I am. I'm in Japan. Right. I read about it. Right. I know there was bonsai at the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens. Right. Uh, I had never seen them. Uh, but it fascinated me. Mm. Just the fact of growing these little trees in pots was just sort of a great idea. Making them look really old. <laughs> and uh, as I said, I uh, spent some uh, spent a couple of weeks with Kyozo, uh, not Kyozo, but uh, Toshio Kawamoto in Tokyo. Mm. Uh, and... Uh, I never heard of a place called Omiya. None of those places. I mean, they were there, but I never heard about it. Right, do the, with the West. Yeah, not the Western uh, here. Yeah. So uh, got to her house and and then met this man who was a broker. Took us to this nursery, and uh, sort of funny in a way, uh, we left. We go back to Obachan's house, hmm. and uh, they said, "Well." you liked it didn't you and I said oh I said it's just great and she said well would you like to study I said what she said well it's been decided that you could become a student and work with the nursery you'll have to stay for a year you'll only have two or three days a month off but I would come home, I would only stay at the nursery a couple nights a week, but I'd go back to her house on the other nights. And would, would Connie still be Connie, there? Connie was still there. Okay. She was with her friends and kids she went to school with. And, right. Uh, and so, yeah, I said, why not? No, I don't, I'm, 
I mean, I've been gone from the States for 12, 11 months. Right, with the traveling. With the traveling. So, like you know, did, by yeah. that time, we get to Japan and one thing, ten, maybe 10 months. Uh, and uh, you know, there was no need to go home. So, sure, why not? I mean, you quit your job, so. So, right. I had quit my job. I had no idea what I would do when I got back. And uh, so, uh, yeah, this is what I did. So, I said, okay, fine, let's uh, let's do it. So, uh, how do you think they approved you without you even knowing it? Do you think your mother in law was like, hey, he went to school for this? He I don't know. Really I really don't or, think so. I, uh, or just by the way you were acting? I mean, maybe the way I was, I'm sure the way I was acting and just saying how neat it was. And, uh, no, I didn't go and prune a tree. I was probably there for a number of months. I mean, I was pulling weeds, right. I was uh, mixing soils, I was uh, do carrying do trees. Everything you could do. Yeah. Uh, whatever he told me to do, I did. What year was this? Uh, 1963. Okay. Long time. Yes, just yesterday. Right. A few and, years uh, back. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I, I just ended up doing things and anything they wanted me to do. Right. Well, you're there to work, you know. You're like, I want to do this because I'm having fun. And No, I, they like eat, I did I <laughs> didn't. Uh, you know. And, you know, the unfortunate people will say, well, you speak Japanese and... No, I did not. No. Did he speak English? No, he did not. How did you communicate? Uh, well, Con would, my wife Connie, would go uh, at least one day a week. Okay. And I'd keep notes. And we had a sort of a pidgin Japanese English relationship, not very well. Right. And I'm lucky I speak English. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, and then and I'd just do the things that had to be done. And, you know, he would come up and he'd say, okay, those. 12 trees here, let's take the wire off. So I take the wire off. And hmm. The following week, there'd be more to, you know, take more wire off. And then there's the, uh, uh, and then started working on plants and started wiring some trees and started repotting some trees and started working. And that, that's what I did. So that's where you learned your fundamentals. Yes. Okay. For about, I was there for about, I'm going to say 13, 14 months. That leads me to a question, but I'll ask that one later. Um, so 13, 14 months you finish, what do you do next? Come home and go back to work, make a living. I mean, I, I didn't have any money. We were broke by then. Because of traveling. So we had, to, we had to face reality. I, to, I mean, we were not money people. Uh, but you still had your car, right? You still had the land. No, no, no. no. <laughs> well, yes, I did. I, I did have it at that time. Yes. But again, that's like another story to ship right. back to this country. Right. Uh, I can only imagine. But uh, yeah, so it was coming back here. I had no idea what I was going to do. Mm. Uh, my family, as I said, lived in this town called Allentown. Right. Came back to their place. And within a couple of days, my major professor from college called me and said, he's got a job that I should take. He would be managing and developing a nursery. It's not a bad job. No, no, it wasn't bad at all. It was actually a good deal. So uh, I came uh, back into the Doylestown area, Doylestown, Pennsylvania hmm. area, and uh, went to work for a gentleman to develop a nursery, which turned out to be a tax dodge, a tax write-off. Uh, and it, it lasted about two years. Okay. It, uh, he owned me, and he thought I was uh, his slave. Good and, experience, uh, though? Oh, fantastic yeah. experience. Good. Absolutely. Except for the other factors. I mean, the fact is, here's your here's a 100-acre farm. I want a nursery out there. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> here's $100,000. Let's start out. Uh, okay. So, so you, you, you start things, and you hire a few people, and you teach people how to plant and how to work and tell him, yeah, but what we're planting, 10 years. What do you mean 10 years? I said, oh, you know, it's a 10 oh, year project. The time gap, yeah. Yeah, so he didn't realize that. But anyway, it. Uh, I was there for about two and a half years hmm. and then we left on a very nice condition. That's good. And then I got a job with an industrial developer as their chief horticulturalist and that was a lot of fun. I tell people it never worked in my life. I always did things that I enjoyed to do. Playing with nature, yeah. Playing with nature. 
So while I was the uh, and the horticulturalist at, at this industrial complex or industrial complexes, uh, I ended up buying a house. Hmm. I ended up playing with, still playing with bonsai, still putting trees in pots, planting trees in the ground. Uh, and this was in the seventies, or when what year was that? Bit? When you were. So you came back, went 63. Now, let's see. Let's see. I'm trying. Now I'm trying to think. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say 68, 9. Okay. Somewhere around there. I bought this property in 1970. In New Hope, Pennsylvania. New Hope, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. I bought a 10 acre piece of property. the house is all on one floor, sort of was, I think it could be my Japanese area. Hmm. Uh, we had a, a horse barn that has become my studio. It's a really nice studio. There have become some outbuildings. The heat uh, <laughs> in that studio. The heat's wonderful. The heat, the, the heat on, yeah, it's been cold, so it does, the uh, heat does feel good. It's it's right it's, uh, so in that time when you, you know, you bought the house here and New Hope, where we're at, you know, Rosé Bonsai Studio. Were you still studying in Japan, or what What were you doing? Well, the answer is no. I mean, was I still studying in Japan? The answer is I bought the house here. Hmm. I'm still playing with trees, but I didn't do anything bonsai-wise. I mean, I had no thought of ever going into business, no thought of ever doing... Or are you doing an established career in horticulture? Yeah, I'm, I'm working as a horticulturalist. I'm working as a... a grounds manager of 500 acres and uh, so consequently uh, I was asked to give a talk local rotary asked me to give a talk and uh, they wanted me to talk on my travels (laughs) and and show some (laughs) slides so I talked on my travels showed some slides and in those slides was a couple of pictures of bonsai from Japan from Japan my pictures that I took. I mean, I. It's a, a, again. It's another story. Right. Uh, so uh, I. Uh, yeah. Okay. I. Uh, I'm losing my train of thought. That's age. Oh, you're talking to the Rotary, and, then... and we were talking to the Rotary, hmm. or we. I was talking to the Rotary, and I showed these slides of bonsai, hmm. and uh, this man came up afterwards and said, "Well, you teach." He said, well, have you ever taught any classes in bonsai? And I said, no. Uh, well, my wife is in charge of ad- adult education schools, and she's looking for people like you who would be able to teach maybe a class in bonsai. So I thought, what the hell, why not? Hmm. So I contacted her, and uh, we talked. And uh, so I got involved in adult education groupings. Was it volunteer or paid? Well, I got paid not much, but something. I get I get paid something, hmm. and uh, I ended up teaching four or five, six nights a week. Oh wow! For Saturdays and Sundays. So and like a legitimate class. Kind classes of, sometimes. Adult education class. In adult education classes sometimes there were twenty people. Wow. And I had to come up with some kind of curriculum. I had to come up with some kind of thing, but I was having a ball. How, how did you come up with curriculum with nothing in place? Did you just take off what I you... I winged it. Well, you did. Okay, did you, you come from what you Don't you, you did? ever wing things? Couch. Never, never. Take <laughs> uh, it until you make it. No. Well, so I, could, did you take some from your specific environment in Japan that was learning? Japan, yeah. Well, what I learned in Japan, this is what I had to pass on to the people. Cause it, right, just in the approach uh, of how you gave the it. The only book know. out there was Yoshimura's, and there was a Ken Yashiroda, and... And uh, there wasn't much else out there. Mm. Brooklyn Botanic Gardens had their collection. Right. Uh, and I, you know, I have to admit, I didn't know a hell of a lot. Mm. I was learning. I'm a student. I'm still learning. Right. I'm still well. a student. Right. And uh, so consequently, uh, I uh, started, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get my train of thought here, mm. but uh, I did this teaching. And uh, finally, I was I was having a great time. So I'm teaching weekends. By this time, I'm teaching weekends and five nights a week. 
which became the uh, the never-ending kind of thing. And uh, so I'm looking around for a piece of property, and and I I want a couple of acres. I want a house all on one floor. I want an outbuilding, and I found this place. Right. And what do I have? I have ten acres. I have a house all on one floor, sort of Japanese feel in the way. Like I said, yeah. I have an outbuilding which has become my studio and whatever else. I've had some greenhouses and poly houses, and yeah. too many other things. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so this is what I had. I built this as I was going along, mm. and, uh, and at that time, I talked talk to my wife, and I said, "Well, you know, I'm going to try to go into the bonsai business. This is fun." What was her I reaction? Did. Well, she thought I was crazy, ah, I uh, that. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I quit my job, mm. and uh, I yeah. started doing some teaching, some lecturing. Somebody somewhere asked me if I would teach a class to a club, and somebody else asked me if I teach a class to a club. Somebody else asked me if I'd help take care of their plants, and somebody else. And then at, at the, I talked originally about the Philadelphia Flower and Garden Show. Right. And the Pennsylvania Bonsai Society, one of the oldest societies in the United States, hmm. had an exhibit there, and uh, so I got involved in that. And and then uh, the director of the Horticultural Society was a woman by the name of Ernesta Ballard, and a bonsai person, and she said, you know, I want somebody to have an exhibit where they're demonstrating, showing people how to do bonsai. And she looked at me and she said, can you do it? And I said, sure. What the hell? Why not? <laughs> so uh, I started doing that, and that was my advertising scope. And so I did that, believe it or not. I'm no longer doing it, but I did that for 50 years. I was an exhibitor, my own exhibit. Oh, really? From bonsai gardens to koi gardens to koi fish to who knows whatever else. We brought trees in from California. We brought trees in from the National Arboretum. All these kinds of things to uh, have a bonsai exhibit at the Philadelphia Flower Show. And the exhibit was my piece. Wow. And that was yearly? or year. Once a year. It, wow. it took me probably January, February to develop the, the uh, all do all the building, do all the manufacturing. The concept and stuff. And get the thing ready for the show. The show was 10 days in March. That's a lot of prep. Set it up, tear it down, clean it up. So, yeah, it was, it was a lot of work. But it was, it was fun, and I had more volunteers than I knew what to do with. That's so helpful. That's very helpful. Yes. So you stumbled upon and kind of snowballed into the bonsai career, it sounds like. As far I think as, maybe you know, I did, yeah. I mean, I, it, wasn't, it was not planned. It was not, uh, if you ask me what was I going to do, I had no idea. You just wanted your I, I like right? trees. I thought it would be fun to grow trees. I thought it would be fun to landscape. Uh, I saw Japanese gardens, and I said, maybe there would be some market for Japanese gardens. All these things crossed my mind, mm. but bonsai was the key. Mm. So you're doing the show, you get all this invitation. Where Where does the expansion go out of um, Pennsylvania? How do, you, how do you get out of Pennsylvania? How do you go to California? How do you... You know, how, how did you meet Bill Valvanis, first of all, you know, in that way? Was that before John? Was that before, you know? No, I met John before Bill. Okay. John was a, a deal. Bill was a little guy out in Long Island studying at the, I think, Farmingdale. And uh, I cannot tell you what year. I, I have no idea, but... Uh, That's fine, yeah. It was just this little kid who was a pain in the ass. <laughs> and uh, but and it really knew but knew thing knew a lot more about bonsai than I ever thought anybody would ever have to know. Mm. And there were some great people on Long Island, and in the New York City area, and up in Westchester County. And that's also where Yuji was. Okay. Now, when I first got back, I don't know. I think I was home no more a week or two, and I saw an article in the New York Times talking about this man giving a bonsai lecture at the at Bronx Botanical Gardens. So I went. Here's this guy giving this 
great lecture, and I thought it was neat. I knew nobody there, but there were a lot of people. Dave Andrews, Marion Killenswan. You think of some of the older names, Joe Burke. Uh, these people were all in attendance. I didn't know them at the time, but I met them. And so I went up to Yuji and I introduced myself. And those who know Yuji knows what Yuji's like. Uh, and I told him that I had been to Japan. I had spent almost a little over a year working at the bonsai nursery in Japan. And could there be somehow or another I would be able to take classes from him? And he said, yes, but first you must spend six months taking my introductory class. Six months? And I thought, what wow. the hell? I, you know, I know how to wire. I know how to prune. I've done that before. So consequently, I never took classes from Yuji. We did could become friends. And I have lots of great stories about Yuji. Hmm. Uh, so anyway, here I am. Yeah. So you met John before, but how did you even, you know, because John and his whole story is its own thing, but you're centered in Pennsylvania. You're still traveling the country at that time doing the show because you know people in California, obviously, to get you trees. How did that? How did that connection come about? Because that's the thing I've never even heard that. Because that's that where where I'm trying to bridge the gap here is like, you have this introduction to be like, hey, I want you to teach these adult classes. I want you to do these club things and do all these sh workshops and all these. How does it get to California? How does it get to all these places where you've got these access to trees? To By bridge? mistake. By mistake. A good one. No, uh, <laughs> you know, it's hard to say, but people would find out that. I mean, it was a small community then, obviously. Yeah, Bonsai was a small community. There were not many people like me around. Especially uh, on the East Coast, right? Pardon me, sir? Especially on the East on Coast. On the East Coast. Right? Yeah. So, consequently, there were, you know, you had to, uh, there were people say, well, can you come to Connecticut? Or you can you come to North Carolina? Hmm. Or you can you come to Georgia or Florida or wherever? So I started, and the more traveling I did, the more traveling it involved, to the point of you know, I traveled all over the U.S. and a lot of other places, hmm. and uh, getting people on, hopefully getting people on the right track, uh, or as, inspired even, you know. As far as John Naka, John, uh, wow, John was brought to Philadelphia by this woman Ernesta Ballard. She had been somewhere in California to a. Uh, horticultural meeting mm -hmm. John gave a lecture she was intrigued she brought John to Philadelphia I met John in Philadelphia uh, oh, was that a lecture he did it was a lecture he did mm -hmm. and I said well what about some workshops and he said oh yeah I'd do some workshops and so we got John to come in and do some workshops and uh, here at the studio and uh, let me stop you there. At this time, John was still just John. He wasn't the John we know now. No. Okay. Right. And, uh, yeah, and then uh, the, the, the involvement in, in bonsai was really in California. Hmm. Uh, so if you needed stock, if you needed pot, well, that's not quite true. There, there were some pots and some tools and so forth and so on in the Philadelphia area called Kiku. Uh, but uh, you know you wanted some nice stock you had to go to California to do it so I'm driving a VW van and I go to California and I buy trees and I buy pots not too many pots but a lot of trees because that's where the Japanese growers were and it's where you could pick right. up trees right. Post and bring them uh, in basically the Los Angeles area and bring them back east with me Back then, it was probably an influx of people with all the accessibility of the pots, right? No, there were not a lot of people with pots. There were some people with pots. Okay. There were some people with pots. But just a lot of Japanese gardeners and things in that way. In otherwise, California, otherwise. yeah. Yeah, okay. Right, right, okay. right. right. That's right. why I was getting mixed up. And uh, so uh, so I, uh, I said I had met John here with uh, Ernesta. And then I invited him out here to give some workshops. We we had what we called Camp Bonsai. Want to explain uh, what that is? Camp Bonsai was a five-day session with John. Ten people basically live in tents, sleeping bags, on top of tables. Uh, and Pool we, tables. Uh, <laughs> and, and we 
study bonsai and work with bonsai for five days with John. Now, was he doing that explicitly here or everywhere? Well, I have no idea. Okay, okay. No idea, other than the fact, you know, we paid him, we brought him here, he stayed in the house. Uh, remember, I have a, had, a, have a, had and had a Japanese wife, and so she and John could talk, and he would say he'd like so-and-so, and she would make up his Japanese meals as he wanted. Hmm. And uh, most, a lot of people know John loves scotch, and so we had plenty of scotch, <laughs> and uh, we had a ball. Nice. And I mean, our classes would start at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we'd all eat breakfast in the studio. We'd eat lunch in the studio. And then every night we'd go into town for dinner and sit around and drink and tell lies and do things. And, uh, <laughs> Big stories. For <laughs> four, five, six days. Wow. And that was... I can't tell you what no, years, no, not, but we not, did it. We uh, did it for 13 years. Not, not for starting. I'm just saying, in that time... Were you, uh, not in year, I'm not trying to get a year out of you, but in regards to like where you were at, were you still traveling and doing workshops or were you more oh, yeah. under the guise of education with John? No, I was still running, giving, I mean, I was under education at John, but still giving workshops, still giving lectures, still being invited places. And, uh, yeah. So still in Pennsylvania this whole time. That's, that's, wow. So then, you go, you know, John, you're doing the camps. As you told me before, you've met Ben Oki, Harry Rao. How, yeah. How did that come about? I think the first time I met that crew, the, I call them the California crew, hmm. is that I had gone to California to buy stock. So I drive to California. Okay. I'm there. Like you said, it was a I talked to, to John. Uh, he says, come on over. You know, so I go over to his place and so forth. And he said, well, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, and he said well, I'm just flinging it by my ear. I have nothing exactly to go on. And he said, well, the group and I are going collecting tomorrow up in Jawbone Canyon. The California group. California. Okay. So it was Harry and Ben and uh, I, I, I now i got to think of all the names of the Japanese gentlemen. But uh, anyway, the, this whole Japanese group, we got together at John's at 3 a.m. with pickup trucks and vans and so forth, and we drove to Mojave. I remember we had breakfast in Mojave, and then we went out to the Hanson Ranch hmm. and uh, spent all day collecting. That was the first time I'd ever collected. I never threw, you know, remember in Japan when I worked at this particular nursery, all the stock that we worked on came from down to Shikoku Island, whether it was black pines, white pines, mm -hmm. shimpakus, azaleas, whatever it was, all this stuff came in from somewhere else and we just tried to refine it. Uh, so no, I never thought about collected material. Yeah, from point A to, and, you know, Z. Uh, yeah. so, it was, so they were the first, so that was the first time I had ever gone collecting. And, it had to be quite an experience. It oh, it was pretty exhilarating, right? It was right? fun. I mean, and these guys had a ball. Yeah. You know, they they party. They had, liked a good time. Had you heard of this crew prior to going there? I was like, this, this no. is John crew. Okay. No. Okay. No. I had, uh, no, I had never met any of them. I mean, I'd gotten, you know, I went back to California a number of times and hmm. had dinners with them and stayed at their homes and became friends, right? Frank became friends. They came to my house and uh, so forth. But John was the, uh, as I said, the one who came. We did camp on site for 13 years. Like you said, yeah. That's a good amount of time. And this whole time, did you ever go back to Japan or study more? Or just were studying in the U.S. and just doing what you could here? Or, I mean, you know, it's tough. It's stuff, tough right? to remember the first time I returned to Japan. Right. But yes, I made probably, I guess, a dozen trips back to Japan. Uh, somewhere along the line, uh, we get a phone call from John. John says, I've got two Japanese people here in California. They're lecturing in New York, and they need a place to stay for a week. I'm sending them to you. <laughs> so we okay. met uh, Susumu Sudo and his wife, and... Uh, uh, Yachan uh, Matsuda and his wife and they came and they spent a week here with us. Uh, 
and that's how I met the Sudos. Uh, and so when I would return, when I got the back to Japan, I'd go there and I'd spend, you know, I'd spend a couple of months in the wintertime. I wasn't busy here, right. so I could go back there and, and work and, and bone up on things. Yeah, I Refine did that. your skills, I yeah. Did that. And yeah. I did it with Sudo, I did it with Oshima, well, a couple of other people that I would go back and work with. And I'm still a student, as I said. Right, you know, life still a, right. As we all should be, right? Yeah. So, as you know, uh, recently I went to Dan Robinson's place in Bremerton. Right. You know, with um, Ryan, my associate with the podcast. Um, he couldn't remember the first time that you all met, but <laughs> do you remember? Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was telling stories of you, Larry Jackal, going collecting in the Rockies and things. And that way, I mean, that had to be later on right with after meeting yeah, I, don't know. And I don't know all that. I have no idea when I don't know when I bought and met Dan I know, I, know I know there's that picture of you and Dan sleeping on those bags in this book Gnarly Trees you know and you pointed that out when I brought it to you I was just thinking because uh, there's so much history here you know I really don't know when I met Dan we've had balls together balls together <laughs> uh, we traveled together we were to the Philippines together we were to Singapore wow. together we did some traveling in Southeast Asia together on lectures and lecture tours you know and Dan brings out that goddamn chainsaw and starts carving and so forth <laughs> and uh, the people down there were just appalled but uh, no we had a we had a great time together and I class our, classify us as nice friends I would say so yeah you only had nice things to say of course but um in regards to, you know, what other history, you know, what else can you think that we're not you know, discussing? I mean, there's so much here, and, you know. Well, there is. really good. discussed, you know. Wow. It's, uh, we have all the time in the world. We have all the time in the world. Because uh, right now, as of right now, how long have you been practicing bonsai, would you say? Uh, from the very first start of trying it and then going oh, to Japan. Oh, from trying it? Wow, that's. that's Some uh, time, right? 70 years. Okay. No. So going now, you have to ask how old I am. I'm old. <laughs> For those who don't know, and I guess we're we are recording this. I don't right. know. I was born in 1935. Okay. Uh, I'm an old person. I have a ball. My life has been fantastic, mm. and I still grow bonsai. So, in regards to you know all your travels, did you go to a lot of countries? in future, you know, in time when you got established and things, and were you in other countries teaching? Yes. How many, how many countries would you say off the top of your head? I never, you know, I never sat down to think about that. I uh, mean, I saw your library. You got books. For some, fuck you, you got. I mean, I traveled all over Europe. Hmm. Uh, I traveled, uh, you know, in India and Korea hmm. and Southeast Asia and Australia and New Zealand. Sure, there's other places there. South America, oh, Latin America, yeah. South America, Latin America, down into Brazil and the uh, Iran. No, that's it. That's Middle East. Uh, and the, uh, yeah, just a lot of places. Did you ever go to Africa? I was in South Africa. South Africa. Yeah, in South Africa. With um, with that ability to do that, do you think your place and time of getting into bonsai was just like the right place at the right time? Or was it just, oh, you know, all I'm, the connections I'm, you made I'm, along I'm, the way to I'm it. sure it was. I mean, I was early on. There was nobody else around. There was John. Right. Oh, we can start talking about people who were involved in bonsai. Uh, I mean, yeah, please. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, 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 now i really got to start thinking. <laughs> uh, they'll all say, oh, you're full of shit. But, uh, <laughs> no, it, uh, there, were, there were some great people coming out of California. Uh, oh, see. You caught me off guard. I should have been writing these things down to try to remember the likes of Jim Barrett and uh, Keith Scott and naturally Nick Lenz and uh, Dan and uh, Larry Jackal. Larry Jackal. He's a little later. Hmm. Uh, and, and this whole time, Yuji was still in the East Coast, right, with Bill? Yuji was still and in the East Coast but with Bill. Had his whole school. And, and, and had his school. And, and uh, yeah, and he was up, up in Terrytown at the old Detmar Nurseries. Uh, Detmar was one of the first nurseries in the country. Uh, and there were pictures 
in the revo or in the, in the revolution, but there were pictures of sailing ships coming up the Hudson River and delivering trees from Europe to Detmars. And Yuji was able to go out and collect some of those trees out of the nursery to develop into bonsai. Wow. Uh, but yeah, Yuji, and then and then Bill, mm. and uh, David Andrews, some of you people know, and Marion Gillen Swan, and and uh, I, as I said, there's a lot of others there. I'd have to sit down and start uh, thinking about them, and then you get down into Florida, and we get Mary Madison. A lot of people thought about. Yeah, but Mary piece, Madison, yeah. but Joe Samuels, Joe was Mary's, or Joe probably was Mary's teacher. Did you ever collect with them? Yes. Well, what was that like? Great. Yeah. They're all great the, all part, the Buttonwoods they're, they're, they're great party people. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Queen of Buttonwoods. Yeah, yeah, I have some great stories of Mary and <laughs> TJ. <laughs> See, I was around in Jim Smith and uh, Helen and Ray Souter and... Uh, mm. And then there's a lot of people who are still down there. I'm trying to think of names and I can't quite. That's all right. Yeah, no. I mean, just the history alone, you know, I, I thank you for, you know, allowing us to talk about this and record it just because there's so much history that's involved with your educational advancements in bonsai, but also just your influence, too. You've had influence, you know. I'll, I, I'll I've that. had a lot of fun. You know, yeah. it's been... Uh, influential fun. Uh, <laughs> influential fun, okay. It, it's, a, it's a hell of a way to try to make a living. Right. Uh, somebody one time somewhere, to be a bonsai person, you have to have somebody that has some money. Uh, I don't know anybody, but uh, right. we've done it. We've made our lives, and we I'm still here. And uh, I'm not traveling. I'm uh, you know, there's some good people out there today. There's people that have had great educations in Japan. There's uh, some people from Europe. There's uh, hmm. we, We're just very fortunate to meet the people. I guess we're recording this. Yeah. But the people who are... Uh, there, there's just some, some wonderful, wonderful people out there. And take advantage of it. Learn from it. And the trees get nothing but better. Right. There's no getting away from it. The right. trees today are just incredible. Right. With, with all the countries you've been in um, teaching in this specific talking points of teaching bonsai and, and workshops or things, what are your top four? I know it's a hard question, but well, being, you know, what your experience well, is. Well, it is. It is. It is difficult. Uh, what are your tops that you think of fondly all the time? If you were to think of a memory of, of traveling. Tree, traveling somewhere. Yeah. Indonesia. Okay, why is that? You know, and what, well, because of all the uh, pemphis and the trees collected in Indonesia, they're just some incredible trees coming out of Indonesia. It still is today. Still are, yeah. still are today. Yes, uh, exactly. The book we were looking at last night. Uh, exactly. The gentleman, what's his name? Uh, well, uh, sure. <laughs> He's a big one over there. I can't remember his name either. Um, you know, my wife, I uh, had two wives. Hmm unplanned I shouldn't say unplanned but my first wife was Japanese and my second wife was Colombian Soli right Soli and Soli was uh, probably much more involved in this whole thing than I was in a way mm. she was involved in the or did you say she was more vocal she was more vocal she okay. was involved in the club end of it she was involved in the organization having been the uh, first international president of BCI, wow. having been a president or the chairman of the World Bonsai Federation. And uh, yeah, and I don't know why I got on that track, but we were talking about collections and areas of where there were just great plants. Well, I and, mean, you traveled to her a lot too during workshops. Well, we did. Right? We traveled an awful lot. That makes sense. We traveled yeah. an awful lot. Yeah, you know, I think the trees of uh, Italy were just incredible. The trees in Spain were incredible. Uh, Was it safe to say that every place you traveled has some um, articulation of awesome or magnificent possibility. trees? Okay. Possibility. Okay. Possibility. Some, okay. some are, uh, and I'm sure today that a lot of the places I would have said, uh, and I don't want to, you know, I, I, I have to watch it. Yeah. I have to watch that I don't step on toes. Right. Uh, 
Because I've yeah. got a lot of great friends in so many places, but uh, some places started out very, sh you know, very quiet, very slow, and have just developed immensely. I was looking at some pictures in India the other day, and I'm saying, wow, with uh, Nukunj and Jerry, Jody Parrott being the what some of the beginners in India, they've got some just incredible plants. Right. But that's that's happening to the world today. Right. Look at what's out there. Yeah, I mean, I would say the invention of YouTube and all those things that way. I mean, people are, well, Karate Kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I work with him. Really? Yeah. I, I have to hear this story. I've never no, heard this story. I won't. Oh, come on. <laughs> I worked, uh, yeah, I did some work, some, some, uh, worked with Pat Morita on uh, commercial work. He was doing commercials. How did that come about? Somebody called me one day and wanted to rent some plants and so I, they came down, they sent this person down, and they wanted to rent some plants for a commercial. There you are. And I said, no, somebody's got to water them, somebody's got to take care of them, or you're going to have to pay for them. And, and they said, we'll have to go back to our superiors. And they called me a couple of days later and said, well, you know, it's a lot of money. And I said, well, that, you know, unfortunately, that's what I've got. Right. And uh, so they said to me, well, how about if you come to New York too? We'll double your way. We'll double what we're paying you, but you take care of the plants. You do this. You do that. Oh, and so they wanted the trees, but didn't want to do the work. No, the they, work well, they had to take care of the trees to use them as commercials. Right, right but they wanted you to do the work. So, uh, oh, that makes sense. So uh, anyway, I went. It was a great way to make a living if you can do it. Right. Uh, so I went to uh, in New York to these commercials. And Pat Morita was there. He was the guy who was the part of center of this particular commercial. Hmm. And uh, so by the end of the, the first day, he was calling me Chase. And the second day, he said, you're going to lunch hours with us, aren't you? And I said, am I? And he said, yeah. <laughs> you're going to dinner with us tonight, aren't you? But anyway, it was a great experience and uh, made a little money. So were your trees in the Karate Kid? Or, no. or did no. you know the person? Who no, the prison? trees in the Karate Kid was Roy Dagatoshi. Really? Yeah. Wow. So you still had some influence on that aspect, though, to where? No, not really. It's a, it's, a, and I've never seen the commercial. Okay. They spent, they must have spent a lot of money on these commercials, and uh, I never saw them. Oh wow. Huh. I, I never heard that story. That's a, you know, Pat Murray. How old? Yeah, I heard he's a pretty nice person. He was a nice guy, like great Gordon. guy. And as I said, we became, uh, you know, we go to dinner, and uh, he'd, he'd sit next to me, and we'd bullshit and talk and so forth and so on. That's awesome. So yeah. then, you know, with those experiences, that just amounts to even more stories. Because, you know, I want to, I want to track back to um, your influence with nature and how you approach it now. Because you said that you traveled to Bangladesh, right? via car can you uh, talk about that a little more as far as like what you experienced in that and then how you want my drive I mean yeah I mean it's all about it's all about you like we want to know about all the things Chase Rosé because who you are now has been influenced by what you've done <laughs> <laughs> you know and how you approach trees is influenced by what you've done well I've always you know? liked trees I've always liked trees I've always looked trees and, right uh, I wish I knew more. And it's like this electronic gadget here. I am not an electronic person. I'm lucky I can use a cell phone. As a matter of fact, I have no idea what the, where my cell phone is. You got your fancy watch, though. I do have a fancy watch. But that's because, again, we don't get into this, right. but my friends have given me an Apple watch, and it's to take care of me when I fall. Or, I drink, you know, or I drink, lose your phone. Or... I drink too much. Right. Or I do those kinds of things. And, uh, yeah, I find my phone. So, um, in, uh, your, in your travels around the world, you know, going to Bangladesh, and that, you said that took eight months driving? Drove from London to Calcutta. Oh, Calcutta, sorry. Okay, 1963, mm. my former wife, Soli, Soli, God, get names mixed up, Connie and I drove in a Land Rover from London to Calcutta. Eight wow. months. You guys, 19, live, you guys living in the Land Rover too, right? Land Rover was home. Okay. 1963. Picked up the Land Rover at the factory in Sully Hall, England, and then outfitted it for camping, and it was our home. 
And we drove through England a little bit and then into Europe, to France, up into Belgium and Holland and down along the Rhine and Germany and finally into Austria, to Italy, uh, cross into uh, Greece, Greece through Turkey, into Syria, into Lebanon, back into Syria, down into the Gulf of Ak, no, the Red Sea. All the way down to the Red Sea, such places as Petra, you know. We, we but I was stopping at all kinds. Of, I'm, I like archaeology. I like right, history. Right. right. Uh, we were following somewhat the Alexander the Great's trip. Oh wow. Um, and I crossed the pipeline to to Baghdad, where there was a revolution going on, and down to Babylon and to Ur, uh, down into Basra, the Persian Gulf into Iran, through uh, along the southern coast of the Persian Gulf, and then up through Efsan hmm. and Ter- you know, Efsan. I'm trying to think of the name of the cities, I can't. Uh, Persepolis, Persepolis? No. Er, Could be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then to Tehran, and across to the Caspian Sea, and east to Bichette, and then to an Uf- and, it, and then into Afghanistan. I loved Afghanistan. I really liked it. The people were nice. Uh, it was an interesting country. We spent two months traveling in and around through Afghanistan. Uh, from there to Kandahar to Kabul and into Bamiyan and Bandamir. Uh, I climbed the big Buddha that the Mel- Taliban blew up. Oh, Remember yeah, that? yeah. I, I climbed really to the top to that, of that yeah. thing. Yeah. And then from there into Pakistan and up into Swat and, and then into India and up into Kashmir and uh, Nepal and Assam and uh, to find it to Calcutta. Wow. So, yeah, it was a trip. It was a, it, and you know, you don't think, what the hell, you're doing it? You what, what even brought it on? I mean, because I remember, I remember so what, I met you a year or so ago now, right? At Jim Doyle's place, Nature's Way, for the Woodstock class with Rob Hoffman. Right. And we, we you know, we, we had discussed all this, but more so that's more than I found out at that time. <laughs> so I was like, wow, that's so many I don't places. want to talk too much. You know, yeah. you know, no, but the more you know, the better you, you just understand as the person who was involved in that, you know, and your experiences, it helps me understand who you are more too. But like, um, I'm still trying to figure out, like you quit your job, you know, it's the sixties, you had long hair, right? Everything was, everything was hippies and all that. right? I mean, that's off topic. Yes, but, I had you know. a ponytail, and yes, I had a long beard. And, uh, and so, uh, so you quit your jobs, go to Japan, but before then, you go to there. You and your wife, at the time, Connie. When did this talk come up? Like, hey, we should travel in a Land Rover, all these countries in eight months, <laughs> and then go to Japan. <laughs> Was that right, just we're a, going? We're going to. We're going to go to Japan. Right. Was this is okay? Event? Her brother's in New York on business. And we see him and we say, okay, we're going to go to Japan. Mm. We're going to spend two, three months in Japan. Mm. And then we're going to come back by way of Europe. Okay. And he looks and says, no, go to Europe first and then go to Japan. Because once you get to Japan, if you don't have any money. At least you've got a bed to sleep in. Right. Good point. So, okay, that's right. So now, how do you go about traveling? Oh. Uh, really, this is an interesting story. If you're gonna want more stories, no, please. I mean, uh, speak freely. Yeah. So I read a book. Okay. Justice William O. Douglas. He and his wife drove from Bombay to Paris in an old, dilapidated Chevrolet station wagon. Hmm. And I said, "Shit! If they can do that, I can drive part of that. I can drive through <laughs> that." Okay. All right. So I'm living in Princeton. You're living in a great educational community. Right. And I ran, ran an ad in the local paper stating people, couple, people, couple driving from London to Singapore, that was our destination, hmm. would like to meet people who have traveled some of that area. Was it like the classifieds you did this in? Or? Well, the newspaper. I don't okay. know whether it was okay. classified or not. Right, it's right. In the newspaper. We had more people answer our ad than we could see. We had travelers, we had historians, we had geographers, we had an ambassador to Afghanistan who uh, uh, answered, 
and all these people. So they gave us just incredible amounts of ideas of how to travel, what not to do, what to do, what kind of vehicle to use. Because I was going to buy a Volkswagen bus. I thought, hell, a Volkswagen bus will take you there. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's how that started. And uh, uh, so anyway, this was the group of people that we got together, mm. got together. Some people, I haven't seen any of them in a while, so I hope some of them or most of them are still around. But I, I know at the time, we had, a, we had a party the week before we left and invited all these people to this nice... Oh, all the ones you met up. All yeah. the people we met, we had this great party and everybody had a ball. Some saying it was the best party they'd ever been to with travelers and so forth and so on. So many stories and, there. And uh, so that started us on our trip. Okay, so what kind of vehicle do you buy? I ended up buying a Land Rover. Right. What dr what route do you take? Well, what did Alexander the Great do? And where did he go? And how did he do it? What would we like to see? What wouldn't we like to see? Hmm. Uh, what are the historical ruins? What are the archaeological areas? Uh, so you're looking at all these kinds of things, keeping notes of them. And uh, so uh, that became sort of our trip. We needed to get a carnet for the car. We needed to get insurance in the car. They wanted to know where we were going. Uh, How do you explain that? We just told them where we were hoping to go. Oh, just we're going from here to there. No, no, you got to be a little more <laughs> explicit. And you talked about maps. I mean, the greatest maps at that time where the Royal uh, hmm, British maps. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of the. Uh, I can't think of it. But uh, but they but you didn't have maps of the whole area. And earlier I talked about that we used aerial photographs. Right. In such places as Afghanistan, or Pac not Pakistan, Afghanistan, and. Uh, Parts of uh, Iraq. I'm, I'm thinking here. Iran. Most of these places you're going to don't even have specific roads to travel, right? Well, they did, they had roads, sure they did. Or, but they not were, like. But no, they know. were gravel roads. There were there were days we never got out of second gear. Oh, you know, wow. just up and down and in and out. We saw some just beautiful places, great places. Uh, sure did I take some photographs? Too. I did. Do I know where they are? Not really. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, that's what I did. That's quite a journey. And that, you know, in that way, thinking about it, like what you saw as a nature-oriented expression in that way. You know, well, the, the, the you nature know. and the, yes. I mean, we drove into Kashmir. We drove into Nepal. We looked at the trees. We got above Timberline. We looked at the, uh, the trees growing along the Caspian Sea. We looked at the olives. We looked at the... Uh, uh, rosemaries and so forth that were growing into cliffs that you couldn't collect. But I really wasn't into collecting at all at that time. I was just, we were traveling. We were moving about. Mm. Uh, we traveled, uh, we usually took one day a week that we rested. We just picked Sunday mm. for no particular reason. If we got somewhere it was nice, we'd stay. If we didn't like it, we'd go on. Mm. Uh you know, we met people who owned villages. We met royalty. We met the common traveler. Oh, wow. How did and you... we met people all over the place. You met all, all over the place? Yeah, world. it was yeah. just, it was incredible. This was in the 60s? 63. Wow. So, with that influence of what you've done in that area, and then going forward, you know, all these things, you buy your house in 70. We bought this house in 1970. 70? You are still in Pennsylvania. You have your trips. You're married to Connie at the time still. Uh, when does Jim Doyle come into play? Because he's a local to Pennsylvania as well. What is, when does Jim Doyle come into play? I can't say what exactly here, but Jim came down here and took some classes and some lessons. We became Because he was in horticulture school, right? Yeah, he went to the same college I went to, only a bit later, hmm. and uh, so we've become great friends, and uh, I don't know what more you can say about it. Uh, well, I was saying the influence spreads because I've talked to Jim, hopefully we'll have him on here someday, uh, in saying that 
you were a big influence for him or many people in this case to get into bonsai more yeah but i didn't know it at the time that's probably the best reason right uh, you know, <laughs> he's just uh, doing it naturally you know jim had a little nursery grew a nursery grew quite a nice nursery got involved in japanese gardens got involved in bonsai mm. uh and it still is involved in bonsai yeah. Uh, there's a young gentleman over here by the name of Robert Mailer. Bobby came here for as a student. I don't think Bobby was 16. He may have been 15 when he started here. And he. Uh, and said he's, he's my age now, right? Mid 30s. I would think so. Yeah. Mid 30s. Maybe older. I don't know. But uh, anyway, Soli and I, Soli, got my names mixed up. Connie and I were the ones that sent, made all the arrangements for him to study in Japan. And where did he study? He studied with Susumu, uh, yeah, Susumu Suda. Hmm. And, uh, but yeah, he was uh, just a young gentleman who came and helped us here. So let's, let's jump back for a minute with Bill, because, you know, you said you met Bill and hung out. Um, did he ever go with you to California or out west, or was he mainly just east coast all the time? You know, I really don't know, but I would say Bill was probably more East Coast. Bill was very much a Yushimura person. Yeah. And I mean, uh, you said that he studied he, with him for 30 years or something? Probably, sir. Like 30 years altogether that he studied with Yuji? Like all, well, all it was wrong. a long time, and and Yuji is, was a vast amount of knowledge. Vast right. amount of knowledge. Uh, he started a lot of things, too, did, for the Did a lot play. of things. Uh, I know that he was... Uh, he was always on time. If he was going, if he was going to come in that door, he would be standing that door. He said, "You're going to come here at three thirty. He would be at the door at three thirty, regardless of coming early or Regard, not. He, he would never be... come early. He would never come late. Uh, Yuji played a great piano. Hmm. Studied Yuji studied classical piano oh, uh, right. as a young man. And when he got here one time, he said, "You have a piano? Yes. Who plays a piano?" My son was taking piano lessons. Didn't do much, but anyway, he took piano lessons. So Juji sat down at the piano and played and played and played and played. Another time, you have a beer in front of you there. Yuji mm. uh, said, you ever drink beer standing on your head? <laughs> what do you mean, beer standing on my head? So Yuji got in the middle of that rug right there, stood on his head, took one hand, took a bottle of beer, and I don't know how the hell but uh, we would laugh about that kind of thing. <laughs> so I'm very fortunate that I did meet some of these people. Yes, I was friendly with them. I was friendly mm -hmm. with Yuji. I was friendly with John. Mm -hmm. Were they friendly with each other? Unfortunately not. Yeah, the, the East versus West kind of... And you know, uh, you know, we all ought to be together. Right. Well, I guess I'm what? talking here. But, and yeah. you know, there's people who are painters in the ass, but uh, we're all learning. We're all learning something. We learn something everybody else right well why do you think not to get political here but i have always wondered and even knowing them the best out of anybody i've known now um why do you think that and if you don't want to answer in certain ways totally fine but why do you think that that um consideration of east versus west that mentality of versus came about in your opinion you know because wow i know that's a deep question but that's been an itching on my mind for a long time well, John was certainly a, you know, and John was the first guy to just, he traveled the world. He traveled, I mean, I not admit, admittedly, I traveled most of the places he's been to and maybe others too. With him or, or no, after not, him? No, not one with him at all. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, John was just very vivacious, very outgoing. You know, he laughed, he had a good time, he liked to have a drink, he... Scotch, right? uh, yeah, Scotch. You're right, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and uh, he was very—he was an, an Americanized Japanese gentleman. Okay. Yuji was very Japanese. Well, he's because John was born in Colorado, right? Right. And then Yuji was born Japan, in Japan. Japan. I mean, his parent, his family had, and is still there. His family still has a nursery. It was one of the premier bonsai nurseries in Japan down near. Uh, the name of the nursery? Amakura. It's, uh, yo, 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 the name of it. 
I don't know. In Tamagawa. Uh, I just don't remember. It'll come to you. All right. Uh, and uh, but there is that you know that influence. And, and said, so they uh, yeah. they were a f there was a competitive situation. I don't say it was great by any stretch of the imagination. Hmm. I have some stories that I will not tell. All right, of course. Uh, of course. And uh, but they were both great guys. Yeah, for sure. And they helped create what we know now as Bone Sign America, right? Mm -hmm. Without those two and yourself yeah. and other well, people, no, I'm, I'm just a person along in there. I mean, I, I, I as I said, I'll give I, you the credit you deserve. You felt, you've helped the Pennsylvania scene. You've helped a lot in the Rust Belt. I mean, you know, I moved here from Portland, Oregon, or uh, well, grew up outside of Portland, but Oregon itself. And you know, there's Ryan Neal, Matt Real, Hagedorn, uh, Kurt. Right? The list goes on. You know, you have Dan Robinson up in. Uh, Washington, Washington, you know, you have other people out Bjorn there. You down know. south in yeah. Tennessee. Right. Whatever. You know, but in the instance when you have just, you know, we were saying, yeah. we were telling me, like, when you started out, nobody was here. You know, you were that train trolling along, carrying the caboose where you didn't know where you were going. You just. Yeah, I guess you're you know, right. You know what I mean? You're right. You got to take, take it as, had, it as you can. But <laughs> I'm going to give it to you. Because, you know, no, you're I a had, friend. I've had a, I said this earlier. Yeah. You know, I've had a great life. Right. I've never, have I worked? No, I never worked a day in my life. I was always with, been with plants. Always playing, right? I have right? had fun. Have I had any setbacks? Sure. Right. Is my health the greatest? Not bad. I'm 87 years old. I'm still running around. I'm still pruning trees. I'm still blue. I'm not going to travel much anymore. It's just, it's uh, become a pain in the, uh, I, I like staying in my own house. There's a beautiful house. It's a great place to be, exactly. you know, and, and anybody that's listening to this, they're more than welcome to stop in and we'll open the bottle of scotch or bourbon and Rose share. Rosé Bonsai Studio, yeah. Yeah. With, um, you know, as we've been talking, I mean, I came up yesterday, you know, I can only stay for a day just due to things at home and I got to get back with work and stuff in school. But um, with, uh, with your time now, you know, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people want big trees in the beginning. And then you hit a point in your bonsai experience, we'll say, where you're like, ooh, big trees are hard. <laughs> when did that come about for you? If I well, ask, you know, for me, you know, I was never in, when I first started out, I was not into bonsai trees. I was probably into chewing bonsai. Oh, uh, smaller, small trees. Small, okay. small trees. And John was here one time and he said, your trees are nice. You. He said, but you need a tree with an oomph. Oh, I said, big, big oomph. Okay. need big trees. Mm. Okay, fine. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I started looking around to collect some big trees. And I also have a lot of acreage here, and I planted a lot of stock out. I get out to California, and I see some big trees. And I have big trees. Mm. And uh, they get bigger and bigger all the time. I also, just right now, I'm looking at a... Uh, Ficus that I bought from uh, Jim Smith about 30 or 40 years ago. It's really a neat tree, and it's here in the house. Beautiful with, ficus, yeah. Yeah, it is a nice tree, isn't it? Mm. And, uh, but, uh, and I just brought that up because, you know, we have to think of a tropical bonsai. There's a hell of a lot of... Right, that's becoming there, a bigger, bigger thing I now. I think it's a, uh, a market that can be, but not big ones. Yeah. You get down there to Weikert's and they, my God... But they grow those kinds of trees in Asia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here again, I'm just uh, running around the bush. That's totally, this is a conversation to speak freely, you know. Just, <laughs> just finding about who you are while we have some bourbon, you know. and, and uh, uh, That's and, my drink. For anybody who wants to know, I drink bourbon. <laughs> I drink Jack Daniels. I drink <laughs> Gentleman Jack. You do uh, like the bullet, the bullet, you know. Well, that's all right, but Gentleman Jack is my drink. Gotcha. Now, uh, I know. now I know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're sitting in front of a fire, mm. wood burning fire in the living room. Right. Uh, what more can I say to that? Well, even today, you know, I was helping you repot. You know, you did right. your stuff, and I was repotting some trees. I, how old is that hinoki? Was it, you said it was about 80? The hinoki I started, ay, ay, ay. I started in about 1973, 4, somewhere around there. Okay. And it was about 10 or 12 years old when I started with it. Okay. My first tree 
was from seed, and I started in 1958 with some Japanese maple. It's not a great tree, it's just a night tree. So it's, nice it's, it's, it's memorabilia, you know, yeah. in the essence of yeah. this is where I yeah. started and this is yeah. where I've come from. You know, um, you were asking about big trees and yeah. so forth. Uh, well, I know you had your injury too with the tr tractor incident, if you don't want to talk about that, you don't have to. But <laughs> had that, a tractor roll over him and he crushed my pelvis. And then full repair. Yeah, but that didn't stop me. But lately it's been, you know, I, I'm, I'm not as strong as I used to be. I can't carry big things the way I used to. So I'm. Uh, I think I just want to have Shohan bonsai and be done with it. Did that? I know plenty of people that are like big trees only. Small trees are for whatever you know. I'll get to those when I'm. I don't know. Here I am. My <laughs> age. See, you just you just said it. You know, at my age. You're going to get to it. Yeah, but in regards to that, did that have an effect on you as a bonsai practitioner? Like in, in regards to like getting in small trees, more so realizing or having the realization that like I'm having a hard time with big trees. I need to go with small trees. No, it hasn't. Uh, or just influencing. No, it's I, easier I to take just, care of. Or... I just look out there. I've gotten rid of most of my large things. I will keep some small, uh, larger things that uh, I just talked about. It. Right. We talked I was about hoping you with today. Yeah. In Oki, we talked about the Japanese maple. There's probably spruces, five or eight or trees or spruces yeah. that I like. Uh, Soli had a lot of big trees, a lot of trees, and they're in the house here. I've sold a few of them. You still have the Jabata uh, Kaba, right? Yeah, the Jabata Kaba. The Jabata Kaba, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and, and the one behind us in front of the big street, oh, yeah. there is uh, another ficus. I'll keep some of those. Mm. And, uh, and as I told you, uh, they're going to find me someday out there pruning a tree with a hand or, you know, Right, turning scissors, being the happiest smile on your face every day, you know, with with your you know with your experience with workshops and hosting events, as you said, you know, um, I mean we're looking at this table right now, holding our beverages. You told me a story about meeting um, um, George Nakashima, right? My neighbor. Your neighbor, just literally George down is, the street. George is literally my down neighbor. the street. We're about I ten mean, minutes. We're ten ten minutes from each other. And, we have our bottles of bourbon or beer or whatever, yeah. you know, and, a, and a fruit bowl on uh, George's table here. And, you know, as you said last night, that came about by him approaching you. Um, and for everybody, so they know, George, who is George? So you, George you Nakashima? Can explain, no, just in case a, some people may not know. Well, George Nakashima is a very well known furniture maker, is no longer alive. Hmm. George was in, uh, he actually, he and Anton Raymond worked for uh, Frank Lloyd Wright when they built the old Imperial Hotel and they returned to the United States and George was interned and then Anton got him here to New Hope and he set up his, uh, his studio, his workshop and has now continued on with his daughter and family members. Mm. And uh, But George wanted, be, he liked the he got to a point where he wanted bonsai on top of, on top, on tables, pa paired, and with tables, tables. paired yeah. with tables, yeah. and uh, uh, that. Uh, Can you talk he, about that again? Because I, I kind of remember the story. I was so tired from driving almost eight hours to get here last night. What about this table? Yeah. Like, how did it come about? Well, you know, the table you... came about was that he, uh, George has uh, envisioned what he calls peace peace altars or peace tables okay. and hoped to have them, had hoped to have them all over the world. Mm. And so he built this uh, peace table mm. and uh, so he would hope to have it at the UN. The UN would not take it. Uh, Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York, if you've not been there, it's got, it's the world's largest Gothic cathedral and it has, the acoustics are just Incredible, mm. and uh, anyway, so they were going to put the uh, his his peace altar, mm. big table. What is the big table in the cathedral where they they were going to dedicate it and then leave it there? Mm. And he wanted a big bonsai. And I mean, unfortunately, at that time I had some large trees, but they today everybody would look at them and say, "What <laughs> terrible trees!" <laughs> uh, 
But I had a large tree. They were big, had right? a large tree. Yeah. And so I showed it to George, and he said, "Ah, ideal. Now get a stand." So I go through my pile of stands. And he didn't like any of them. So uh, he said, "Okay, we'll do something." So he came along with this. What's this? Four by four in size? Four by six? Something? Like something that. close to that, yeah. yeah. Something like that. Free form piece of walnut uh, with its traditional uh, what do you call them here oh the uh, butterflies thank you yeah butterflies in the wood and so forth and so on so he came along and said we'll use this so we use that and then uh, he continued to use it and I continued to put bonsai on it and uh one day I said, you know, George, I've got your table. I've got to take it back to you. And he said, it's yours. Hmm. Why am I going to take it back? It's hmm. yours. You've had it for a year or two or three or whatever the case happens to be. So it's my inheritance from George. Hmm. And uh, we enjoyed each other's company. Uh, his children, Kevin and uh, Mira, nice, nice people. Hmm. And I worked closely with them. So in your experience, you know, showing with that, showing all over the all over the world in the demonstration and the workshop, like I said, what are things that you ultimately know work the best? This is, I guess, a question that I get asked a lot, you know, from clubs or people in clubs that are trying to do better. Work the best? As far as um, getting people to come back. Or Be getting, nice to them. getting people to... Uh, be to nice to even, them. You know. Be nice to them. Be help them. Uh, okay. Remember, a bonsai does not have to have. Uh, you know, we've got some. In, right now, we've got some phenomenal bonsai people in this country, mm. and they want trees, here, branches there. They want branches here. They don't want branches there. They they talk about design. I think we have to tell people that yeah, your tree is nice. Mm. You can get it better. Uh, I mean, I have people coming in here that I I tell them uh, I can't get I can't <laughs> you can't start a dead tree, right? Uh, well, we got the gym magic dust, right? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. So uh, that makes sense in in regards to like um, demonstrations, you know with the utilization of tree you from what i picked up is that you helped kind of start that notion of bringing trees to demonstrations or having a demonstration in the place of discussion i don't think so or helped i guess i possibly helped but i don't think so because you know tracing that back would be like you know Going no, through many, were, many history were, books of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I did a lot of demonstrations. I've been a lot of places. I've met a lot of people. Hmm. I'm sure there's people out there tell me I'm a pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, no, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. And I think each person, regardless of what you do, hmm. and then I think of something that happened the other day, but regardless of how you do, your trees should be, you should enjoy your trees. If you don't enjoy them, the hell with it. I had a guy come in the other day that had bonsai, had trees that he had been growing for X number of years, and they're all four foot high. Mm. He said, they just grow. I said, well, did you prune them? That's no. Trees do. <laughs> so I'm looking at this man, and I'm saying, you've got them in nice containers, mm. but you don't prune them. We all know. Nobody told me to prune them. So I said, can I prune them? And then I said, I can't be too hard. So I went from four foot to two foot. Uh, <laughs> can't be too hard. That's, that's half 50%. Said, you know, I, I, but, uh, and, and then I said, now here. But you explained here. it, right? I explained it to him, and then I took him out and showed him another Japanese maple. And I said, you know, this is, look at this. He said, how'd you grow it? I said, I cut it. Mm. You know, it's got two inch trunk or some such thing. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, getting that getting that education across to people. Like, um, I've talked with you. You know, we got new people in the Columbus Club, and you know, being that I'm started in the Bond Society of Portland and was taken under the wing of some people there. You know, the old uh, 
President Lee Cheadle and things, and he was mentoring me in the beginning. I met people like you, Jim, you know, just through the the continuing education, I'll call it, of meeting these teachers as yourself, you know, um, trying to find what fits best for people in regards to telling them about their trees, if they need work or not. Um, wow. And now that's, it's a very difficult thing. Yeah. Exactly. Trying to tell them what's best. Have you, have you, would you say not figured it out, but found a way that makes it. No, well, you try to figure out where does this, where does the person live? Where is the person going to keep the trees? Mm. Uh, can they keep it on a shelf? Can they keep it outside? Can they keep it inside? Can mm. they, uh, I tell, I'm, I'm free here when I, I, uh, I have no qualms about people coming in. You've seen that. Right, right. Coming and, in know. here and just answering, uh, trying to answer all kinds of questions for them and probably haven't done a very good job of it. Uh, but you've got to show people how some of these things have been grown. And, uh, you know, people like that. Again, I look at that uh, ficus over there. I said right. it was started by a man by the name of Jim Smith. Banan fantastic grow. Great guy. Mm. Uh uh, wonderful collection, better collection at his house than at his nursery, mm. uh, but uh, a great tree. And you tell people, you know, that tree right there is about 30 years old. Mm. And then they say, oh, well, where can I get it? Well, you can, <laughs> but you have to pay for it. Right, pretty thing. And uh, and that's, that's the other thing. There's, 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 just, there's some wonderful collections being developed. Mm. There are some wonderful bonsai studios. There's some uh, private collections. There's some just. Uh, I'm glad to see what I've been able to see. I would say so. I mean, you've had definitely um, an impactful experience for your life. You know, with with in what you've experienced. I mean, like I said, we we saw, I saw a book last night in your library. It said bonsai of Slovakia, uh, and I was like, wow. <laughs> Slovakia, of all the places, my, you know, but that's that's up and coming possibly too, but we don't know about it, you know. My library is crazy. It's uh, it's it's there's no need in the day of electronics to want libraries, but I uh, I've got a great one. <coughs> you know, there's that fascination with libraries of pulling out a book and you know smelling the pages, so to speak, and the whole it's like opening a bottle of wine, you know, getting all the senses flowing. But um. In the instance of, you know, uh, uh, where is bonsai going today from where it's been? Because not to say that you have seen it start, you have seen it from the beginning, but you have been in some instance in the uh, starting of the car, so to speak. Does that make sense what I'm saying? That, as far as like, you have been in certain circles, uh, past and present. Um, that have guided this river of bonsai experience and education to where we are now. Where do you think in your experience <laughs> and years of being involved, um, where do you think will go next? Or where can it go next? Or Well, they can just go where do you next. Want it to go, it, it's, you know? it, oh, wow. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a deep question. That's but. a loaded question. You know, there's a lot of collected material out there that's there's a lot of great growers out there. There's people who are growing stock for bonsai purposes. And I'm thinking only of this country. I'm not thinking of oh, right. Outside uh, the Southeast US, right. Asia where they've been growing trees and grounds for a long period of time. Or, right. But uh, in this country, uh, I just think we, we're, we're having fun. Right. The, the most difficult thing, I think, is just trying to get people to know a little bit more about it. It's, I don't know whether it's much like golf. I've never played golf. No. Uh, but it, it is a time-consuming thing. Mm. It is time-consuming because you have to think of watering. You have to think about the horticultural care. Mm. You have to think about the tree that you're growing. Mm. So it's not an easy thing to grow a nice tree. How do you, you can grow a tree. You can right. grow any, I'm just going to almost say something, but you can grow any tree in a container and you can play with it, and you can call it a bonsai, and you're going to be happy as big and shit. But it may not be quite what it is. Uh, 
it may not have the branches where they should be. It, but the more you play with it, the more you learn about these things. Right, right. As and, as, as you and do, if they right. belong to a club, they belong to a club. Uh, I, a lot of people say you don't have to belong to a club, but belonging to a club helps a hell of a lot. What about for the people that don't have access to a club? Trying to get well, friends. Well, okay. Now I now there again. I'm not very well at, at the electronic mm. composition of things. There are things online. Right. There are classes online. There are... Well, like Ryan lecture, Live or Bjorn's... Uh, yeah, uh, you know, Bjorn that. or yeah. Ryan or two of the yeah. people you'd be or thinking Hagedorn about. Too, or Hagedorn too. Michael. Yeah. Uh, some of them are really... Those guys we just mentioned. Yeah. I'm not going to mention them again, but right, they're right, phenomenal right. people. Right. Uh, there's a lot of information out there, and there's some guys giving... There's still some information out there that's just so horrendously bad, it's terrible. Mm. But uh, we're getting better. There's, there's nice things out there, and, and a person can hopefully learn from some of these people. Right. And people are. I mean, from what I've been reading, just from you know quarantine in March 2020, more people have gotten into back to nature, houseplants, bonsai even, uh, than any other time in recent, probably, I'm going to say probably the past... Five years, well, you know? it, it, it could be. It could be people getting involved in it, but it's uh, uh, people look at these things. People come here, and I, I don't know how many. I could walk around. I'm in the house. I could walk around the house here and look at about 12 trees right. that came in here from customers that are. I mean, you have in your bedroom and your study. My bedroom, my study, yeah. the living area here, or the great room, as we call it, with the Kitchen, fireplace right, and so right. on. And. Some of my, I'm having a hell of a time getting the grow to look halfway decent because they didn't water, right? They didn't fertilize, right? They didn't give it enough light, right? They didn't, they didn't, they didn't. But they, they just love these trees. You know, I get calls weekly. That's my tree. That's my tree. Is it doing okay? <laughs> yeah, it's coming along. Well, when can I pick it up? Six months. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. Uh, or somebody just tells me how much they've spent on a tree and what, what can I do with it? And I look at it and I say, uh, I can keep it alive, but what's it going to go from here? Right, right. And the guiding, the guiding, yeah, guiding forward. Well, just like today, you know, we got sandwiches at the, that sub place. <laughs> and the, the guy was saying, oh, I just got rid of the plants. And serendipity as it goes, I'm like, well, this is a gentleman pointing to you. Been doing multi since you know when and you know that exchange of information right there that that leads to the next possibly generation of he maybe goes to japan we never know <laughs> no you never <laughs> you know, know. You never you know, know. he may be the next karate kid or whatever <laughs> you know and just that influence you know with experience i'll say as your experience has influenced well me, there's there know. are there are so many good people in the and the beauty, of the unfortunate, I don't say the unfortunate, but the beauty of it is you have the West Coast, mm. you have the Japanese on the West Coast, mm. you have a lot of just great bonsai people out there that are mm. teachers, have introduced us to things, and I admire them all. Right. Well, the East Coast, well, in West Coast now, you have the new show, Jonas and Eric Schrader. Yeah, but you had, you have, uh, we have Bill, who did a lot of the his national uh, show. The national show. And all that. And then yeah. we have the National Arboretum in D.C. Right. You know, which is amazing. I went there this summer. That was, that was amazing. So many trees, you know. And, um, you know, Andy Bellow being assistant curator, and then Michael, I forget his last name, he's the uh, full-time curator. Uh, you know, but then you have, in Washington, you have the... Um, was it Weyerhaeuser, Weyerhaeuser collection, which is now the Pacific Bonsai yeah, Museum. Yeah, yeah. Weyerhaeuser yeah. Museum, the Pacific Rim Canute right. Museum. Which David DeGroote was past curatorship for that, right? And Aaron Packard is now the curator. Which is an amazing job. And it's, it's beautiful. And then you have some shows that people that I, I, you know, some of these shows are just incredible. And there's mm. beautiful trees. Uh, the unfortunate part is it, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the people who are the judges know what a classic bonsai is to look like. Right. They know about it, but they screw people up because they right. what 
because what they do is they give, well, that shouldn't be there, and this shouldn't be there, and it doesn't do this, and it doesn't bow that way, and that branch is too short. Uh, so the preconceived notion becomes notions. like a dog show, and I, okay. I'm not sure I like that idea. Or the preconceived can, notions play a factor in their judgment. So uh, Pennsylvania Bonsai Society, if I can just say that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think how many years ago. 195 years <laughs> ago. Uh, anyway, Pennsylvania Horticultural Society has a flower show. Right. And there were bonsai on exhibit. Mm. And they had somebody come in and judge the trees. Mm. And it was atrocious. It mm. was absolutely atrocious. I won't get back into the nitty gritty of it all. But, yeah. But it was just terrible. Mm. Just terrible. And so they came to the point, and this has got to be four, at least 40 years, maybe 45 years ago, 50 years ago, hmm. that bonsai should not be judged. You hmm. may have a tree that is a, 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 a tree of uh, fantastic merit, but it's not the best tree in the show. And uh, so uh, I was the bitch. Uh, to say that we would not judge our trees anymore at the Philadelphia Flower Show. Would it just be there in representation? They would just be there as a tree to enjoy, to look at, to say, hey, that's a pretty good, nice tree, or maybe it's not a nice tree. Hmm. And also, you know, these these clubs and so forth and so on, you know, do they give everybody a chance? Are there shows for the neophyte? Are there shows for the advanced person? Hmm. Um, I don't want to go off on a tangent. Well, you're fine, you know. No, I understand, yeah, in the regards, because that comes up a lot just in, you know, I'm part of the Rocky Mountain Bones Society via online, which has been great since quarantine and stuff. Bones Society of Portland, like I said, in Columbus, you know, and meeting other people around the area of the Rust Belt and the Midwest within the clubs there. We've all come to similar conclusions, like what constitutes as a good tree? Because everyone has their... Opinion, preference, and personality in their tree. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I like I like what you just said. That's very nice. Uh, and electronically, as I said, I'm lucky I can use my cell phone. I have no idea where it is. Uh, I mean, you texted me the other day. I was like, "Go chase, moving on up." <laughs> 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 you know, texting better than me. No, you know. no, no. I just I just learned how to do that the other day. That's good. That's good. It's yeah, like you looking at your iPad today and say, "Wow, can I do that too?" <laughs> if there's a will, there's a way. With um, you know, with your time traveling and then going to Japan, you know, I'm interested to hear. Um, do you remember your first Kokofu show? Or your 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 uh, uh, your emotion going into the Kokofu? My first show in Japan was the. Uh, Expo or the first 1970. show, Okay, do you remember how you felt going in? Was it like I was just a, I was just elated, picking <laughs> shit. I was just incredible. I just looked at these trees and saying, "Can they really do this? Can they really mm. make this tree?" And then the other thing is, I'm looking at them and saying, "Well, how long did it take?" Right. You know, it took a lot longer than I anticipated. Mm. But yeah, Expo 70 was my first big show in Japan. Kimura wasn't showing then, was he? No. I don't remember. I don't think he was. I think it was, I think it was more 80s, wasn't it? Pardon me? I think it was more I'm, I'm bad on the timeline with that. But Well, there were... I mean, uh, there's a lot of people around. You know, there, I, I, again, looking at Japan, I, I have been very fortunate. Hmm. I have been very fortunate to see Oguchi and... Trying to think of some of the other names of the collections that I've been able to go and spend not an hour with, but days with. Mm. And uh, so it was more than a tour. More than a tour. It's uh, uh, Mr. Sudo, Susumu Sudo, and Mr. Kimura were absolutely buddies. Mm. And and we'd go to the nursery and we'd spend hours and hours and hours looking at trees and doing things with trees. And, saying is it possible like we go to other places and other nurseries uh, yeah i've been very fortunate no yeah. god's been good to me that's good no and the bonsai gods <laughs> um 
you know, with your time in Japan and experiencing all that, going to Omiya, not knowing it was there, finding out it was there, <laughs> um, as far as the people you spent time with, um, when coming back to the States, you know, when Kumura-san and Kobayashi-san came on the scene, do you remember what that was like in the States when people found out about those two people? I mean, Kumura was... He, he facelifted everything, right? He literally turned a tree, 180, the whole thing. You know, it's in his book. And Ryan Neal's talked about it uh, more than once, you know. Uh, from what you recall, what was the influence there in America? Uh, from what, if, if you can recall. I mean, that was, I was it an overnight thing? Was it like, boom, one day this with John and no, the next it, day no, boom? No, it was, it was not overnight thing. Or as a slow crawler, it was a slow, slow thing, and people were just excited about it, but they didn't know how to go about doing it. Right. You know, you see this thing, and you look at the tree, and you say, "What the hell? <laughs> how do you do that?" You know, it wasn't until and uh, whether they they all, whether it was Kimura, whether it was Kobayashi, whether it was Suzuki, hmm. uh, these are the three nurseries. I, if anybody goes to Japan. Go see Nakamura's nursery, you want to go see Kobayashi's nursery, and you want to go see go see Suzuki's nursery. Mm. Suzuki being the new man in the block, but is or Shinji, 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 uh, Shinji, Shinji's, yeah, Shinji, Suzuki, yeah. uh, phenomenal, mm. phenomenal nursery. But uh, you know, they've, they've all had their play. They all these shows have their play. Whether you go to Mid Atlantic or whether you go to the Midwest or whether you go to, you know, the, the show that I have always said I'm sorry I missed was the show that Ryan had. Uh, well, the Artisans Cup. Artisan I, I missed Cup. too, I, sadly. I never yep. saw that and I keep myself all the time. And it, so we have to think about contemporary. Yeah. You know, it's a contemporization of bonsai. It, it's, uh, we don't need it as old, well, not at old timey, but. Uh, what can be done? The traditional versus. Uh, you know, people talk about Nick Lenz's trees, talk about David Crest's trees, talk about other people's trees. I may not like them, but it's an but idea. You appreciate them, right? It's, a, it's an idea. Nobody liked Picasso. Right. I mean, they wanted a Renoir, they wanted a Suzanne, or they wanted a whatever. Uh, and all of a sudden, Picasso came along and goes, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit that's you know we can't live with that right but uh some of these guys are growing trees like that right right that no, doesn't right. please me at all right but i don't have to look at it i don't have to have it right well see that's the thing you know moving from the west coast where i was born and raised lived majority of my life being almost 34 now except for the last four years or so uh being in ohio uh i picked up on this sense where Sometimes I get the feeling it's still this traditional versus new uh, relation uh, in re in regards to, well, that's not in this traditional sense. Oh, but that's not in the new form. What is your perspective on that? I know I have heavy questions tonight, but I've wanted to ask these for a while and I've been saving them up. <laughs> <laughs> In my piggy bank each time. Well, I, I, you know, I was very much a traditionalist. To when? From my training. Okay. Initially training in Japan. Right. That, that, would, that uh, would be to be expected. And right? uh, uh, I still think that a lot of what I do is rather tradition. Hmm. Uh, I like, I mean, my feeling is, oh, has always been that you know, bonsai is a stylized tree in a container. It's a tree that is an artistic development. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you still think it's a craft with an art or an art with a craft? Wow. And that's another. That, Double way. We'll that's wait a, on whole, that we'll that's come a back. whole night. We'll come back to that. That's a whole <laughs> nice discussion. Part, part two. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I just... Uh, I look at trees and they, I become, remember, I, I don't want to say remember, you can't say that, but I've studied trees. Right. I've looked at trees. Right. I've been very fortunate. I've trees, seen trees in all the major, 
I don't know. Well, I haven't been to Antarctica yet. Uh, just sometimes. <laughs> but uh, no, there's not any trees here. Oh, yeah. But uh, I've seen just some incredible trees. Mm. And, uh, and I feel that the... Uh, to develop these as bonsai is, is very important. Mm. And and I like the natural feeling of some of these trees and how they're grown. Or what more approaches are Well, uh, if you get back to the Japanese trees, when I first was in Japan, yeah. they were almost cookie cutter type of things. Mm. Uh, you know, that it, you know I, I was at... Uh, Yoshida's nursery and we got 200 pines in I did I would wire 200 pines and every goddamn one looked just like the other there was no thought no imagination to it just machine like uh, where today you can get into a tree and you can think about it you can do it and it may not be good hmm. but it's your involvement yeah. your personality it's, it's your personality yeah. involvement yeah. in the tree yeah hmm. Do you think that will ever go away? The versus us versus them in the regards to traditional or whatever approach. I mean, think of Dan. You know, Dan's has been his own. Like I always say, he's an enigma. You know, he's been his own. Well, you thing had Daniel, and but also yeah. you had Nick. True. Yes. And both, uh, both themselves together, and, uh, creating that. Uh, do what I want because I like what I do. If that's safe to say. I mean, I, I've never, I've never met Nick Lenz. I've seen his work; it's amazing. I really, he's, uh, I, he's fun. I really appreciate the emotional response I get from some of his work, because it tells me that I'm feeling something in relation to what I'm seeing from him. Same with Dan, you know, just in a different way. He used baby heads with Nick Lenz. Dan uses gnarly trees with, you know, collected material, you know, or stuff he's grown from Korea, but. Yeah, you well, know, yeah, those know, Korean trees, you know, and the, yeah, the those, ones that, that were out her, behind the barn. Those there. are amazing. Yeah. Those are amazing. You know, um, do you think, in your experience, you know, as we've talked about tonight, with such a vast career and length in the career, um, which is ever changing, like a tree, you know, it's always growing, even now. You know, uh, do you think that? It'll just disappear someday. People are like, okay. What will disappear? The the this versus that. The you well, know. I don't think so. I, mean, I, I kind of hope it does. I don't. I don't think so. Take a tree as a tree. I don't know? think so because you're always going to have the musician who's playing avant-garde music. Whether you get uh, you whether you get Beethoven, yeah. or whether you get Shostakovich, hmm. or whether you get Leonard Bernstein, hmm. or whether you get uh, I'm trying to think of six other names there. Or whether you yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. whether you like Andre Previn, mm. I remember, and I just was listening to some of his music the other day. Somebody says, "Who the hell is Andre Previn?" God, he did all kinds of musical things. He had jazz, he had pop, he had uh, classics, he had the whole nine yards. But uh, Bonsai's bunch like that. It's it's not going to be one thing. It's not going to be a sterile thing. It's going to be a changing thing. And there are going to be certain peoples who do certain things, and you just, oh, wow, isn't that neat? Right. Well, yeah. Let's 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 try it that way. Or somebody else is going to say, oh my God, I can't do that. That's horrible. That's a, just terrible. Right. Uh, there will be people who say, uh, you know, the trunk is important. The other the people say, the root system is important. Mm. Uh, That's all important, right? <laughs> so it's all important. But there's going to be uh, those kinds of things. Uh, uh, that are out there you know there's um, like we said earlier the right place at the right time as far as you getting involved and things um, evolving from there for yourself you know personally do you think these approaches now not then they may be new but could they be that just a philosophical question here something to think about for anybody to ask I think what this sometimes in relation to life does in bonsai, these approaches we're taking now, do you think they've been tried before but weren't accepted at the time? Like Picasso. Uh, yeah, that's very interesting because if you look at the trees 100 years ago right. in Japan. Early kokofu even. They look well, pretty no, wild. No, the early know? kokofu. 
They were not stylized near as much. Right. They were very natural looking. They were the trees that came out of the mountains and the woods. You go to China. The unfortunate part of China is today they're copying the Japanese so much and they're buying all their trees in China. Right. But there are still people in China that have some very stylized old... Uh, I remember going to... Hang on, hang on. One of the side K people, not side K people, but Penching. Penching people. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I haven't gone down the Penching. Anyway, I, I, I can remember going to one of their homes and looking at their trees, and their trees did were very, very different and very, very neat. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I think there's going to be very differences there. I think there's going to be maybe even an American style, maybe a European style, maybe a mm. God knows what. But we're at the very be- we're at the beginning. Mm. We're just at this beginning of this whole thing. Beginning of a new era, or beginning of a beginning. Well, like new era, or new beginnings of bonsai that. Uh, mm. uh, new avenues to go down, right? And sure. Right turn compared to sure. left. Sure. Sure. In regards to the name bonsai, you know that's strictly Japanese. And I talk about this with my wife. She's Japanese, you know, and she's brought up the fact. And I want to get your opinion on this. That's what I'm asking. Can you call it bonsai anymore when it's in America? Because it's a cultural adaptation. To well, it's it's, American, it's right? called it's it's called bonsai in America because it's uh, something that was known as being bonsai. Right. Uh, we call it tree. That <laughs> that is a chess piece. Right. Right. Is it a chess piece somewhere else, or is it a chess piece? It's always a chess piece. Okay. Okay. It's always going to be a chess piece. That no matter whether you put it there or whether you put the rook here or whether you put the castle here right. it's a chess piece of course, bonsai is as far as I'm concerned is a bonsai it's mm. a tree in a container mm. it's a t- tree in a container to create the illusion of your larger older trees it's stylized it's been pruned it's been trimmed mm. uh, but there's no reasoning why we can't have Stylize the bonsai. You mm. could call it something else. Mm. Uh, you can penching. Uh, there is penching out there, and penching is well, basically the back. same thing. It's coming back. And then you. Uh, I mean, look at the, uh, this, can't, uh, the Montreal Botanic Garden. They have a whole penching. Absolutely area. Yeah. great. Uh, and then you get. Uh, um, man, I see my mind is shot. About, like, I said know. that many times, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, in regard, like we were talking about, in regards to calling it a bonsai as a tray in a pot, when does it stop being a bonsai? When does it stop being a bonsai? Is it the pot that makes the bonsai or the shape of the tree in the pot? I mean, the pots are changing. Look at the pots. The containers. Well, like what I used today? Or, the, you containers, know, or, you know. the containers are, are, are vastly different from what they used to be. It's become a geometric. Uh, it's, uh, it's to complement the tree. It's to complement the colors. It's to complement the, the whole nine yards. Uh, Even the stands, you know. Stands, stands, are, stands are... Look at this stand here. Right. I was going to use it. Mm. Uh, it's a little big. It's just a little uh, big. Yeah, it's, a little big. <laughs> it's a good table. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> I mean, you know, and all these questions I have, the reason I ask you is because in your experience, you know, with John, Yuji, all these things, your takeaway is far greater than mine. You've seen, you've been friends, you've talked, you've had maybe these conversations too with some of the forefathers of what I know of as personally as bonsai in America, you know, and you are involved in this, yes. You know, you're going to take that and you're going to run with it because <laughs> that's a compliment I'm giving you, but... In regards to, you know, this relation of philosophy of it, America does have ways of changing certain uh, approaches historically. It's not. It's not only America today. Hmm. It's the world. That is you true. Know, that we, is true. We I have, need to get this you have you have yeah. bonsai here. You have bonsai in Mexico. You have bonsai yeah. in Peru. You have bonsai in South Africa. You have bonsai in Ecuador. You have bonsai in in uh, northern India, the bonsai in northern India are very vastly different from the bonsai in South India. Uh, and then you get down into uh, whether it's uh, Vietnam or whether 
Vietnam, they like rocks, uh, but they'll always be that way. Mm. You get into another area where they like something else, or into Europe, mm. uh, and also what can be collected and what can be used and what people like. I've always said, and I'll never do it because I haven't gotten to it, <laughs> but I may. Uh, I wanted flowering, that I wanted a tree that would be appropriate each month in the year. That is a really cool idea. That has been one of my things that I've always said I have never done. It. So then you'd be uh, using ume in the winter? Because yeah, of sure. Right, right. Ume, well, maybe not ume, maybe, yeah, but apricot. Or conifer. Or, or, or conifer or uh, viburnum or spirea or... Right. Uh, That's you know, a really then, cool concept. But then you have... Okay, so we have bonsai. Right. So we have uh, rocks... Right. Look at those stones over there. Right. Yeah. Right. Like so we have a suiseki. Hmm. Is it suiseki or is it artistic pot plant? Or not artistic pot plant. But artistic rock. Artistic, artistic yeah. rocks. Uh, and then we have uh, kusumoto. Yeah. I mean, God, look at that. The kusumoto are just absolutely beautiful things. And they're weeds. They're flowers. Hmm. There can be trees. And don't ask me exactly what a kusumono is. We have to go to Young Choi for that. Oh, that's it. Uh, Which leads me to a question with that. When did you meet her? Or how did you meet her? Because <laughs> I, I know you have such a you know an existence with Young now. You know, it's it's your, uh, uh, as you said, I believe, uh, bonsai daughter. Or, what? Or, Young or, you calls know. me her bonsai father. Oh, right, right. Uh, aye, aye, aye. I mean, that goes back. Well, but that was young, and Sully were very good friends. Okay, so did she and meet Sully before she met you? Well, we probably met about the same time, but I... Because I remember, because that's tonight we talked, you know, with Young asked stuff. me the other day, where did we meet? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Young's a sweetheart. You know, I, I, I've been able to take a class with, with Young. I was able to help her explicitly at the national show this last year, 2021. Set yeah, she did a great things. job. That, that, great. that exhibit she put on that up at the amazing. National Show this yeah. year was good. It's somebody you should take and do your... Uh, uh, oh, interview? Interview. She has, a, she has one out there, but she's pretty, you know, she's a pretty private person. So, you know, in good time, hopefully. But mm -hmm. um, in regards to, you know, what she's doing, and that influence is having... It's pretty big now. I mean, she's hosting online workshops with moss creation and just even her topic of moss and beer. <laughs> I mean, I can't think of bonsai without, you know, beer <laughs> or scotch or whiskey. But in regards to it as young, you know, you've seen her and her experience grow to where she's at now, right? Mm -hmm. What was that like for you? Because, I mean, you know, you... Not that you've had a helping hand in development, but you... Uh, no, none at all. You none know. whatsoever. Not yeah. whatsoever. She, uh, yeah. she and Sully were great friends. Mm. Uh, she just calls me her bonsai father. Right. And uh, so I've become other people's bonsai fathers or what have you. <laughs> uh, OGs and... Uh, oh, God, say, knows, <laughs> God knows what. It'll be my, it'll be my daughter's uh, <laughs> bonsai grandpa too. <laughs> Oh, yeah, my contract, I hope it's another 10 years or some more. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Drink some good green tea. No, um, you know, just uh, a lot of people, I discuss your name a lot now since I've met you at the Woodstock. And I came home that day, you know, or that, that after that weekend with Rob as we drove up there, you know, to Jim's place. I went and slept in his uh, camp in his shed tow on his property, you know. Right. I heard Michael Hagedorn did. I'm like, I'm from Oregon. I can camp anywhere. <laughs> you know, get me outdoors. I'm happy. And, you know, we were able to eat breakfast, you and I, with Jim and stuff and dinners. And, you know, that weekend changed my, changed my perspective and my direction, if you will. Because I learned more in that weekend about history relation for all of American bonsai. And I want to say thank you for that because that just, not that I had a hatch that was closed, but the hatch was fully blown open by the windstorm through Wyoming, <laughs> you know, and it blew my mind uh, in regards to, you know, hearing your stories about, like you said, traveling from to Bangladesh in, in, in eight months, you know, all these things, but also the other factors of knowing John, 
knowing all these people that I was never able to meet, but through and there's a you, lot of you know I just mentioned a few names. There's, right. I keep thinking of people. There's a lot of great people out there, and a lot of people who've done a lot with bonsai and for bonsai. Right. Uh, I'm just one of the many. Uh, As I've been hearing a lot from people who are the new people, you know, Ryan, Michael, Bob Schlafer, Bjorn, whatever, whoever else, I apologize, I'm missing your name, but the term I hear is standing on the shoulders of giants, you know, over the people that came before. You know, in regards to moving forward, we can't forget where we came from, right? Being an American approach to this tree art. What are some things that you would tell somebody never to forget? <laughs> like I said, I've been saving them, taking them to the bank and putting them for a rainy day. They need another drink. Oh, I can get some more. We have the, we have the makers. Bottles empty. Uh, aye, aye, aye. Um, Take some time. I'm going to grab the other one. Don't forget. <laughs> this is my, my weekend of spring break. So This is your spring break? Yeah. Now we've got a uh, maker's, maker's mark. Maker's mark, yeah. Maker's mark. And, uh, repeat that question. So, in regards to people who um, are, you know, the new uh, people on the stage, world stage or America stage or what have you, of the. Um, Bonsai educational experience or outreach. Uh, Ryan Neal, Michael Hagedorn, Jonas Dupuy, you know, Bjorn, um, Andrew Robson, all these people. I've heard more than not, you know, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants and I need to pay my respects and, you know, pay it forward by, by helping progress. You know, we, we, we can't get forward if we don't know where we came from. My question is, what is something that you would tell someone to never forget from what you've experienced or what has been passed. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I know, it's a loaded one, but it's the one I've been wanting to ask you specifically for a while. Now we're getting deep. <laughs> but that's what Bonsai is about, right? You know? Well, yeah. It's, uh, and on a personal level, know, but also... You, can't, you, know, you cannot think about these newer people that are out there. You have some people, you, you mentioned a bunch of names there, and I, like I said, they're, I apologize for but they're over, all over, they're over. all slightly different. They all see a different viewpoint. Well, like we said, the and, personality in the tree, right? And, right, but none of them are none of them are none of them are wrong. Mm. Uh, regardless of who you say it is, there's there's something about them that is right. And again, I get back to whether it's uh, Renoir or whether it's uh, Gauguin or whether it's uh, uh, whoever. Mm. Uh, they're all a little bit different, yet we like what they've done. Right. And I and I think that bonsai is the same basic way, mm. is that you have people who do things differently and uh, uh, see things differently. Mm. Uh, I don't know. You know, it's uh, there. There does you don't want one clear cut and say that's got to be it. Right. You you got to have some. Interpretation, uh, interpretation yeah. in it, some uh, thoughts in it, some involvements in it uh, that uh, are are not just the Japanese got it from the Chinese. Right. Uh, the Chinese got it things from things in <laughs> things in uh, well the Phoenicians and the Babylonians all grew plants in containers. Okay. But what kind of plants? Right. We're, we're talking about growing trees, mm. but we're talking about growing, whether it's grasses or, or what have you. Mm. Uh, they're in, for living extended periods of time. Uh, nobody thinks about going out and buying a, girl, buying a poinsettia and keeping it ready for the next 23 and a half years. <laughs> you know, you throw, or the, you throw, or the, until next Christmas. You throw yeah. the damn thing away and get one next year, and that's, is it wrong or is it right? Right. My feeling is it's wrong, right? But uh, oh, we should right. just yes. keep it going, because I I like that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, and each one's a little bit different. Each person sees something different. I said this before. Uh, 
Hmm. It's it's the same way with the growers and the people who are doing it. Each one's a little bit different. Hmm. They're not right. And they'll tell you. I think if you sit down and you gave them as much as we've been drinking and you got them across that they would also say, you know, we're just there. Yeah. We're, we're what we do is that uh, is not the right way it's just the way we do it yeah. it's the painter it's the uh, again I get back to Picasso mm. oh, some people hate Picasso mm. and there, but there's other uh, there's other guys out there women mm. children mm. I saw an exhibit the other day at the uh, Baltimore Art Gallery that it was just crazy with different peoples different kinds of people different qualities of people mm. uh and uh, the same way is true of Monson. Mm. There's no one right way. That's what I think a lot too. Because, you know, I think where we get lost in this essence of this way is right, this way is wrong. Like, just keep it about the trees. You know, there's no right or wrong way if you're having fun. When I was skateboarding, the people that would be trying to do this whole thing in the mindset of, I'm going to be a professional. What would they do? They would stop skateboarding because they weren't having fun anymore. It's like playing basketball. No, you if you play to win, you're not going to have fun of why you remember to play, you wanted to play basketball. You know, you go out in the golf course every yeah. day, you enjoy it. If right. you went out in the golf course, you didn't every day, and you, you played and you didn't enjoy it, there's an asshole for being there. Right. It's like bonsai. You're doing it because you enjoy it. Right. You, you, it, it, it becomes a part of you. It's yeah. a part of me. Within, um, I, I think we discussed the, the new um, idea that there is the, the outlet for women specifically called the uh, Purple Pot Bonsai Association. Yeah, you I talked believe. about that. I never yeah. heard about that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's wonderful. Uh, Do you think it's overdue? Like it, well, it, it is. It, it, is. Long time, it, you know. it, it is, and I think that Sadly. in this country we... You know, Kathy Shaner was just, she's incredible. I love her dear. How, how long have you known Kathy, by the way? <laughs> I mean, because I'm going to keep asking this because you've known so many people. A long time. I've known Kathy. Did, did you know her before she went to Japan or after she came back? No, probably after. I don't think I knew Kathy before she went. Because okay. uh, she was originally from East Coast, too. She's from Long Island, yeah. yeah. She's an East Coast person. Right. But she just did a wonderful job, and she's still doing a wonderful job. Yeah. But she's you know, she's a woman. And uh, there are some people who will unfortunately think of Kathy as a, you know, maybe we've got a, a young 14-year-old coming along who's uh, going to set the world on fire. It may be. Let's have it happen. Uh, I'm ready for it. You know. Uh, Push into the stardom, you know, or into the stars, you um, know. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, I in 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 regards to like like I said, I used to skateboard a lot. Just many things. You Even, still? Not anymore. I'm too old. <laughs> I don't like falling and hurting myself for fun. In regards to skateboarding, but even in construction, you know, there's that whole I'll call it the old guard. You know, and I was fortunate to be having my first club, and I keep talking about Bone Society of Portland. I know, but it's in regards to there was very big acceptance there, but. It, oh, Always was not like that or it wasn't always like that I should say uh, from the stories I've heard you know the old guard as we call it is still around well there is some of the old guard around and some of them uh, there you know any one of them you meet on a one-on-one -on -one basis are phenomenal mm. they may bitch about certain things to somebody else uh, do you think that's because they just don't understand the new the new uh, it could approach. be. It could be. So I, I know some people who are very upset with what's in bonsai. They think the only way is 50 years ago, Japanese way. But if you took the Japanese way 50 years before that, it's not even it would even be right. different. Right. So it's it's always different. But there are people who are very stubborn. Mm -hmm. I will mention no names. Oh, of course. Who are very, very stubborn as to say, bonsai today is just horrible. That goes more than just a few people, though. You know? Well, it does. We both it heard, does. heard that. It does. Yeah. It does. It does. Uh, we, you know, if you take a lesson, you have somebody who teaches you one way. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. Well, that even goes into... Uh, again, I get back to this story of whether it's music, whether it's right. writing, whether it's books. Right. Right. Uh, 
there's so many different things out there. You may pick up a, a book and say, oh, this is a piece of crap. <laughs> uh, but it may be uh, whoever. Yeah, it may affect someone's life in a different way that they mm-hmm. move on to. Right, right exactly. Well, the same goes for, we'll talk about soils for a minute. You know, We were discussing today, you know, some things coming from, uh, you know, Akadama. You know, what were you using before Boone came back, as we said, you know, we then became the Boone's mix when Boone Boon came back. The one, one, one. Right. Lava, Akadama, all this, right? right? West Coast, volcanic activity. <laughs> East Coast, Appalachia. <laughs> well, you know, right, right. Uh, not so much the Akadama proficiency nor the you learn the how to learn. You learn how to grow trees in the soil you're using. So uh, there are certain things, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you have good drainage, whether you have good aeration, whether you have good fertilizers, whatever. Mm. Uh, but there are some things that make it easier. So we're always looking for the easier way out and the way. But then that's proven by people who are growing the trees. Yeah, yeah. Even the field growers or the collectors right now, too. You know, Andy Smith. Yeah, we have collectors, Hollywood, you and know. you just mentioned it, field growers, people. Boys, yeah. You know, I, I've grown I mean, a I, lot of trees in the ground, and uh, it's been fun. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was, I mean, I, I hate to say it, it sounds dumb from my perspective, being that I'm still very young into bonsai, you know. I've only been doing it, what, four, five years now? Which is, you know, a good length of time, but more than one year, less than ten, you know. And in regards to not understanding that when Akadama came to be, it didn't just fly over like a crop duster across the field, you know, all over America. It was a slow onset for people to take it on. I mean, you remember when it first came to your your personal nursery, right? What was that like for you? Like, it was like, oh, I found gold. <laughs> or, well, I'm still not sure. Okay. No, it, 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 it has worked well. Right. But we also just got some of this stuff from South Africa. Is oh, it going right. to be any good? Right. Uh, but time will tell. Right. Uh, I just heard today that there are some people on the West Coast that are starting to think about quarrying it or aren't quarrying it. Oh, in Oregon, is it yeah. Gonna, is it going to be any good? Right. Uh, how many people remember Leon Snyder? Do you know that name? I think I've heard that name in passing. Why do Leon I know that name? Snyder was University of Missouri. Uh, and... and, and uh, and his environments, his in- environments had water. Every one of his environments had stones, bonsai, and water. Hmm. Water was his key thing. And uh, but he was collecting clay out of the uh, shit, the desert. Somewhere, I mean, a desert somewhere in the middle of America. He was collecting clay. And I can't remember the. I just thought of this, but I can't remember the name of it. And he swore by it. He said it just made his plants grow so much better. It was an airborne clay that when the winds blew, the dust blew away and the clay settled. Hmm. I, I just wow. That's that. I, that's that's a hundred years ago. I didn't know <laughs> uh, the elixir of the gods is helping to come yeah. back. But no, see, that's yeah. I, I met too many people in my life. It's a good thing to have, you know, um, in regards to the experiences you've had um, with your approach now. Is that the cat? Yeah, that's the cat. He's climbing up. Cat wants to get in. I've got to get the cat. Oh, go for it. Very good. For those of you that don't know, you're talking to a person whose wife was Salita. Salita was a very big diplomat of bonsai and we lost her a number of years ago, but she loved cats. Mm. And the friend gave Soli a cat and uh, snuggled up to her. And she was uh, very fortunate about two weeks before her passing. Uh, Tiger Usabata Tiger. from Japan. Yeah. Ty, he was in the country mm. and he wanted to come and see Soli. He called me and said, Can I? Stop and see Soli, and I said, "Yeah, sure." And he said, "Well, I just have to see her." And so he came down to see Soli, and uh, they had a little bit of a get together and so forth. Mm-hmm. And so Soli named the cat Tiger. So that's his that's name, Tiger. Do um, you? So you you know Tiger pretty well then. 
I don't know him pretty well. Or, no, or I don't. Uh, acquaintance. Like. Acquaintance, yes. Have you been to his nursery? No. Okay. I know his uh, his nursery is doing really well. He just had a big article. Yeah, he's done very well. There, there are certain things coming out of Japan, and there's a lot of experimentation going on in Japan. I will say so, yeah. I saw a guy who I follow on the Instagram, you know. He's been doing a lots of bonsai uh, showing in, um, you know, boutique shops and things. Oh. and uh, yeah, young guy. Yeah, with a yeah, lot of tattoos and stuff. Times in Europe. Really? Mm. I, uh, oh, I mean, they had... <laughs> What was your opinion on uh, the uh, the Olympics and the bonsai? Did you watch the Olympics this last year? No. They had bonsai in the Olympics. Well, they had bonsai in the Olympics before. Oh, right. They had bonsai in all kinds of things before. Hmm. I just uh, I just know a lot of people were myself included and my wife were discussing. Those don't look like they could. I mean, there's so many professionals. Why didn't they get someone professional instead of something that looks like out of a... He is a professional. He travels all over the world giving us sessions. Oh, no, no. The, the, the bonsai they had showing in the news for the Olympics, uh, it was um, not the highest caliber. Uh, so said my wife. <laughs> in regards to uh, what they See, have available. <laughs> we're, we're talking here and now we're laughing and we're having more drink. I just put wood on the fire, uh, so we're settling in for the night. Yeah. Uh, but I don't have a television set. Have you seen one? Oh, yet? that's correct. You're right. Because when I got here, you know, you were taking a nap, and you were uh, you were uh, what you call it, listening to um, some Probably. classical music, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. yeah, I got here about seven thirty, eight o'clock, and uh, yeah, it was. I mean, it was late last night. Yeah. No, I just. You know, and some people say, I mean, I think I should possibly have one, but it takes time, and I don't, I don't want to deserve that time for it, and I don't need it. Mm -hmm. I am playing with the computer. I am learning how to do that. Yeah, phone, people think you know. I'm an ass, but uh, that's ah. what I am. <laughs> you're, you're honest, I will say. That's ah. good. Um, okay. Do you think, um, you know, I know it's getting late, but... There's just so much good conversation we're having. Um, so stop me when you need to. But um, I don't get to see you every day. <laughs> you know, a few times, a few times a year or so. Live lucky. Um, you know, being born here uh, and the, you know, being in Pennsylvania and having that, uh, Pennsylvania is a big state. You know, it's a long mm -hmm. state, long. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of different attributes of the state. You have some steel, Pittsburgh, coal, out here manufacturing. You know, it's a very big state, prevalent for American, uh, we can do it attitude, right? Do you think that if you were born in a different area of the country, you would approach Bonsai different? Wow. <laughs> okay, I I grew up in Pennsylvania Dutch country. Right. Moving around right. quite a bit, so you saw a lot I of people. I moved around a little bit. Right. I settled in a place that is, uh, I hate like how to say it, is desirable. Uh, Was it an experience? Well, no, no, but New Hope, New Hope, Pennsylvania. That's a nice little area. Is a gorgeous little town. Everyone should visit if they can. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> come see you, you know. A, it's it's no, okay. No, but we have a great downtown, but we also have, Good food we're an too. hour and a half from New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, we had, uh, we have a theater in town. We have a what, 15 minute drive great New bars. Jersey. We have boutique hotels now. We have motels now. We have great restaurants uh, uh, and we have a lot of people that live in the area who who live he, they're here on the weekends and live in New York in the week and, mm -hmm. in, in here in the weekends right uh, it's a educational it's an educated area mm. uh, that doesn't mean that everybody is educated but people are uh, of a uh, there's, a, there's an essence about it. Essence about it, yeah, yeah. And I, uh, I'm fortunate to be here. Yeah. Uh, 
you were surprised earlier that I didn't know a lot of my neighbors, and I don't. I've become, I'm very much a recluse. Well, you're a bonsai, I, you know. I don't know yeah. many of my neighbors. Yeah. Um, but it's a great place to be. I'm in the middle of a 14, or no, 10 acre woods. Hmm. I get up in the morning, I look out onto a pond. I uh, get up in the morning and I see trees, and I get up in the morning and I see the birds. And uh, and we have a cat running around here now, <laughs> getting ready to roost. No, as, as you know, as so like back to question. Um, so then, There's a lot of art going on here. Right, right. There's a New Hope School of Art. Uh, this is a very big area for a lot of uh, I don't want to call it a think tank, but uh, 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 an area that allows expression. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And there are pockets now. I mean, look at the Carolinas. There's that, uh, is it Danny Coffey's down there, I believe? Wow, well, he's down in Doing Nashville. Mm -hmm. oh, he's, okay, yeah. Below Asheville. You know, okay, yeah. all through there. Um, I know somebody in Carolina's doing something with uh, bonsai and whatnot, with the art scene and whatnot, making things happen. Um, you know, I've talked to other people. I've asked a few people in passing that question. Who are professional or otherwise that have traveled or well traveled i would say and they too are like wow i've never thought about that question before because it takes you out of what we think we perceive right yeah I, it, it's tough i i enjoy the area i mm. do not take advantage of it mm. uh, we did today and yesterday <laughs> yeah, we went to some restaurants we yeah. have a lot of good restaurants we have some airy scares uh, as I said earlier, I do not go out. So, some weeks I don't go out of the driveway. I have a driveway that's about a thousand foot long. Mm. I don't have to worry about people on my road. I don't have to worry about houses around me. Mm. Uh, I'm isolated, which is phenomenal. Mm. And uh, I like it out the way. I mean, I could get up, throw my clothes off, and run around the house bare ass naked. <laughs> nobody would see me except <laughs> anybody would come in. But. Uh, no, it's just it's just nice. But you know, other people have the same thing. Look at Dan Robinson's house. Yeah, you know, well, his there? second house. Pardon me. His, his oh, second, second house. house. Yeah, well, the, <laughs> so first, the, the first house burned down. Yeah, the, the, hell. the first one burned down. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, uh, no, you're right. You know, he and, goes and to. There's, his there's other people that are the same way in their own limited way. Uh, I have a friend in in our town here called Doylestown, mm -hmm. our our county seat. He's got an acre lot took that acre lot and he has spent the past X number of years planting trees on it. Mm. You can't even see the house from the road. Okay. They're all pruned, they're all in neat shapes. His Japanese maples, his elms, his hornbeams, his pines, his whatever they are. It's pruned almost like a Japanese garden, but you drive past, you don't see the house. It's beautiful. Mm. It's a very different type of situation. He doesn't worry about his neighbors. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, um, you know, in regards to that, even that brings a whole bunch more stuff we should talk about later, but. You know, we're, 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 we're bullshitting here, and these people are listening, if there's anybody listening to us. Oh, there will be, yeah. Uh, you know, what you want to do is you want to <laughs> say uh, questions to this guy, <laughs> and we'll somehow or another answer the questions yeah. for you. Phone call recordings. Don't call uh, us Nixon yet. Yeah, but. No, it's, uh, <laughs> life has been fun. Life no, has yeah, been fun. I mean. I have and, no and your approach to it, you know, when you're open to things, you know, you're, you're not, from what today is, you know, we, we went around town. We, we weren't closed off. We weren't just here. You know, I repotted three trees for you. I wish I could have done more, but some things took time, you know. How, how old is that spruce, would you say? Well, the spruce was a cutting from Saburu Kato probably 25 years ago. Okay. That's got some time. And, you know, with Saburu Kato's the, name The uh, Hinoki uh, was collected in, uh, well, came out of a garden in 75, was probably planted in the garden 15 years before that. Right. What else is out there? The junipers, uh, which the were junipers, you know, ah, they're just those are whatever, late, basically you know. landscape trees right. that somebody was wanted to get rid of. Right, turn into some. Right, you know, and there'll be more time, you know, in the future where I can come up and help you longer. Uh, 
given the circumstances that I have right now. Uh, but, you know, in regards to the time you spent today, I really appreciate it. You know, My pleasure. It's, and I allow, you know, coming over. Um, one more question and then call it night, I promise. Uh, is why the name Rose Bonsai? Why not, as you studied in Japan for a year or so, and go back, you know, you did go back and, you know, study or whatever or spend time. Why not go with a Japanese name? As that time, I, I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, that time was very influenced with the Japanese approach. You know, a lot of people were. Right? Okay, that is a very good question. Thank you. I'm trying to come up with the answer. No, all, <laughs> kid, all kidding aside, yeah, yeah. but I'm trying to come up with the name and I can't. Uh, there was a couple in Connecticut. <sighs> That's what happens when you get old. But anyway, they had a bonsai nursery, mm. little bonsai studio as such. Mm. And they called it Bonsai Studio under their name. Okay. And they, they said the reason they did that was that in the idea behind zoning and so on and so on, the studio found sounded much more cosmopolitan, much better oh, it like than it. Yeah. a yeah. Uh, nursery or a art shop or a whatever. And uh, so, uh, God, I can't think of the name. But anyway, I sort of decided, okay, fine. My name is Rosé. We have a studio, so we'll call it Rosé Bonsai Studio. Um, Very niche. Yeah. And that's uh, that's what I named it at. We call it Rosé Bonsai Studio. Had you and thought of any other name prior? No, I never thought any. I never thought of a name. Or anything, and, you know, no, the Japanese thing. No, no. Uh, if I had to change it today, I would probably say my name plus Bonsai. I'd just call it Chase Bonsai. That would be nice. People, my name, my middle name is Chase. Uh, What's your first name? Not important. Uh, kill me if you told me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my middle name is yeah. Chase, yeah. and uh, I may call it Chase Bonsai, mm. uh, which I just sort of like. And I sign, I sign my name Chase on, on letterheads, on whatever else. I don't sign my first name. I don't sign my last name. I just say Chase. I'm Chase. Mm. So I'm if you don't know who Chase is, what the hell difference does it make? Right, right. You're getting your money. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so uh, that's part of my fun. Cool. Uh, um, where can people find you? How can they find you? At the end of Ely Road. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a website? I do have a website. I, uh, my, my wife, Soli, took care of the website. She took care of all the payments, the bills, the whole nine yards. You know, I, I, I was very fortunate. I didn't do bull. Hmm. Uh, so we do have a website. It's called rosebonsai.com. Uh, does it have much on it? No. Why not? Because I'm not savvy to the, all this electronic material. Mm. Uh, Soli did work with it. She had a nice website. She put pictures up. She just did all kinds of things. You know, I'm lucky if I know how to... I asked you today how you took pictures. Right. Uh, I hope I explained it well enough. Well, yeah. But <laughs> I'm still I, getting used to it myself. The iPad anyway, is a whole beast. Uh, so all kidding aside, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm here at the end of at the Ely Road address. You're welcome anytime. Uh, anybody wants to come, uh, I, before, would, uh, right. I would say that they call to make sure I'm here. Because I'm now saying, you know, if I want to take off for today, Eh, nobody called. I look at my calendar. See my calendar back there? Mm -hmm. I look at my calendar and uh, and I take off. Mm. Uh, and I have a lot of friends that I want to see. Good. You know, it's just, it's crazy. People, somebody said to me yesterday, do you drive at night? Yeah, I drive at night. You no, we drove last night, yeah. You know, you do drive at night. And I said, sure, I drive at night. Why not? <laughs> well, do you see all right? Yeah, I see all right. But I drive at night. Mm -hmm. uh, do you drive long distances? Yeah, but I get tired, I sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, do you drive a two-a-day trip? Sure, why not? Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of people I'd like to see. I may not, mm -hmm. and you may be one of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
Here I am. Now we know a little more about you. Um, is there a number that's best to reach you at? I have a cell number. Is that okay to give out? Yeah, my, what the hell, why not? My cell number is, everybody else has got it, uh, plus the, uh, the, uh, People you don't know either. <laughs> the people you don't know either. The people I don't know either, yeah. No, my cell number is 215-499-9035. My name is Chase. Uh, you can say I'm in the area. You know, I won't boo. If I'm here, you're more than welcome. I don't have to get up and go out, but I do. Right. Uh, we can have a cup of tea. We can have a cup of coffee. We can share the bottle of bourbon that you bring with you. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Prerequisite. Uh, <laughs> and uh, no, I, uh, I have a ball. Mm. And I'm still enjoying my life. Good. Well, I think it's you to bed. Kitty's looking like falling asleep. Thank you, Chase. Always a pleasure. My and, pleasure. Uh, thanks for letting us know more about you. <laughs> Today's episode has been recorded, produced, and edited by Kevin Ferris and Ryan Houston. Our music was provided by MIDI Cancer. To find more music from MIDI Cancer, check out their SoundCloud and Bandcamp pages. To find more information on the podcast, please check out our Instagram page, Bonsai Time Podcast, and our website, bonsaitimepodcast.com. To stay in touch with us, Kevin's Instagram is Kevin underscore Ferris PNW, and Ryan's website is right2tree2.com. You can find these links in the description below. Thank you for listening and bonsai on.